Before the delay, we were in search of American flag, which uh, we're lacking one at the moment. So I'd like to call the meeting to order, ask you all to stand, and if we can visualize the American flag in front of Old Town Hall, <laughs> I could ask you to uh, join me in saying a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you.
Also, miscellaneous finance, a decrease of $20,000. This is a carry forward of prior budget and evaluation of the account supports uh, this reduction. That evaluation was done by our finance department. Revenue for building permits. This is an increase of $200,000, and I believe uh, we were all there when uh, uh, Mr. Gilliland from building went back and reviewed. privatization of the uh, Revenue from the Inland Wetlands uh, permit we used for $30,000, and this was a reevaluation and refinement by the department heads based on current year activities. Uh, revenue of conservation uh, applications, a decrease of $10,000. Again, a reevaluation and refinement by the department head based on current year activities. Uh, and as much as I'm saying it's based on current year activity, that would be to build budget for next year. Uh, revenue. Uh, the C -W -C -W -C approved to, no, no, what's the C -W? Okay, that's also a conservation of three thousand uh, dollars based on reevaluation and refinement. And then uh, revenue also from conservation wetlands is ten thousand dollars application fee based on a reevaluation and refinement. That totals $165,000 net uh, decrease in overall revenues. <coughs> Any questions on that? Just quickly, this is this looks like the same list we saw. I think it was on Friday. So there's been no changes. Uh, I'm going to say yes to that, uh, Linda. Do we make any changes since Thursday? Not on For Thursday, okay. Thank you. Okay, Kristen, you okay with that? Yes. All right, moving on to expenditures. Uh, this is uh, from all departments, regular payroll, a decrease of $50,000, $380. Uh, and this is department head salary adjustments. We're gonna transfer that to contingency. Uh, and the function here is then to uh, allow this board to review each department head and decide on any individual uh, raises or adjustments that we need. We'll probably do that in the, the June timeframe. Um, Next up, uh, fire, regular payroll. A decrease of $145,729. And this is an adjustment to the retirements, replacements, and new hires, which occurred after October. Fire. Department of Social Security, uh, $2,113 uh, for the same adjustments and staffing. Fire overtime training, a decrease of $60,000. And this is reducing the projection of six new hires in the academy to four new hires in the academy and a savings of approximately $30,000 in overtime per hire. In essence, we don't have to hire somebody to place them while they're in training if we get the, the two folks done earlier. Uh, fire also, uh, education and memberships, $15,000, and this is reduced training costs associated with the adjustment in the overtime training. Uh, retiree benefits, uh, OPEB, if you will, for the town, that's retiree medical, and this is an increase $27,762, and this reflects an updated number. Uh, next up, uh, retiree benefits, uh, OPEB or retiree medical for police and fire, and this is a reduction of $52,000 also reflecting the updated numbers from Hook and Holcomb are actually. And again, those reductions or increases are relative to uh, the budget as presented in the budget book with the first selectman's adjustment. Uh, retiree benefits, uh, retirement contribution from the town, a decrease of $74,593. This reflects an updated Hook and Holcomb number 
and again, preferred H and HR actuaries. Retiree benefits, retirement contribution for police and fire, and a reduction of $28,000. Again, based on the updated number from our actuaries. In contingency, a reduction of $162,608, $162, and that's a revised adjustment in terms of what we're planning to put into our contingency. Uh, and then contingency, again, uh, an increase of $50,380, uh, uh, $50,380, and that's the uh, potential department head salary adjustments that we had removed in the prior uh, adjustment. From the police department, advertising, a decrease of $3,500. And this is the advertising test for new hires that was paid for by the Connecticut Police Chiefs Association as uh, Chief McNamara had informed us at the budget hearing. Streetlights, uh, under utilities and electric, uh, an increase of $20,000, and that was a request provided by the department heads. We got um, new pricing in from UI. Solid waste, fees and professional services, a decrease of $49,986. This is an expenditure change due to a reduction of the half day of operation. Solid waste. Contracted property services, a reduction of $28,860. And this is, again, an expenditure change due to the reduction of a half day of operations. Um, and then moving on to uh, Hensfield Pavilion. Um, and Linda, you have this broken out by line item, so you'll make those. Okay, but that's. Uh, a collective number um, of $32,666. And those are reduced expenditures due to the closure of Penfield 1. If we're not keeping it open, there are certain costs we don't have to uh, incur. Uh, recreation, um, we have a decrease of $51,400. And this is reduced expenditures in the amount of uh, $34,000 for privatization of the tennis center and a reduction, reduced expenses of $16,000 for other. And again, Linda, you have those all broken out by line item to support that number. Um, then we have uh, Smith Richardson golf course, uh, regular payroll, a reduction of $2,414. And that's uh, per reorganization by the department head. Also, Smith Richardson Social Security, a reduction of $185 for that same reorganization. And then moving on to the Board of Ed uh, concerning health insurance, a reduction of a million three hundred thousand dollars, and that's based on our current year experience and a revised estimate for, for what it will uh, require next year in fiscal year 2014. Uh, next, a Board of Ed Adjustment Health Insurance, uh, $343,000. And this is an adjustment as a result of the bidding process. We went out to bid on new health insurance providers. I should point out that the uh, Board of Ed is still evaluating which provider they'll go with. This is the most conservative number in terms of the options. Um, there may be an option um, for uh, some additional savings, but that's pending a complete review of the proposals by the Board of Ed to see what's actual and how that impacts their budget. Uh, and moving on, um, also from the Board of Ed, a reduction it says in retirement, Linda, I'm assuming that's pension, yes. right, of $144,488.
And again, that reflects the updated uh, actuarial numbers versus what was included in the budget bonus. Uh, as we're going through this, I think it, it's um, obvious that we're trying to use the latest available information. The, uh, one of the challenges in putting together this budget is initially we're making estimates based on December, uh, in some cases November estimates, but December and, and early January. Uh, we've got three or four months uh, more data and better estimates before, so we're trying to take advantage of all those. Whether the numbers come up good or bad, but we're trying to make sure that we're basing today's uh, approval on the latest available information. All right. Then moving on, uh, town departments, uh, this is per schedule for health insurance, uh, a reduction of $455,130. Uh, again, just like the Board of Ed, this is a result of our current year experience being projected by our actuaries for next year and seeing that we can save uh, money in this line across a number of departments. Uh, town, all departments, health insurance for the town, uh, three, an additional $382,614. Uh, this is a, an adjustment based on the results of the bidding process and that both the town and Board of Ed have gone out to bid. Um, in the town's case, the results were clear and we can say that this isn't uh, the number we're expecting to save. Uh, again, moving on, town, all departments, um, for motor vehicle fuel and lube, we basically plug in one number for the cost uh, per gallon of whatever fuel we're using. Uh, we came back with additional numbers. Unfortunately, they were a bit higher than what we planned, so this is an increase of 50000 and $63 across all departments. And again, Linda, you will have that broken out by line item um, so that we can make that adjustment. Uh, unfortunately, the numbers were a little bit higher than we planned. Uh, town, all departments, uh, work attendance bonus for department heads, um, and we're eliminating this benefit for department heads in town, and that results in a decrease of $11,349. Um, and then, uh, let's see, next, debt service as a redemption in bonds, uh, $500,000. And this is use of $500,000 from the fiscal 13 bond premium. This is a bond premium we got from the, the sale of our bonds last summer. We have to use that over three years. Uh, we are choosing, electing to use 500000 of that. Uh, in the fiscal 14 budget uh, to lower our debt service and improve our um, tax increase situation. That's a total of general fund expenditures of $3,747,810. Any questions from my colleagues? You have a couple, oh, please. Do you want to go ahead? Yes, okay. I'm just trying to compare this sheet to the one that we did get last Thursday because there are some differences, so I just want to make sure I understand them. The first question I have is on the moving of the uh, department head increases into contingency. And this might be a question for, I'm talking about the department head contingency movement, the $50,000, 380 coming out of the departments and a like amount going into contingency. Do you know as a percentage of department head payroll what that 50,000 represents as a percentage? Should be 2%. 2%. So it's 2%. It's 2%. So whether, whether we were looking at it individually, numbers above or below 2%, this represents a flat 2% of all those dollars. Correct. Thank you. Um, my next question, I just want to make sure I understand the, the components. Is that good? Okay. Um, is on the health insurance, because I was trying to match these up from last week, and I, I believe I have it right, but just if you can bear with me for a second. On the, on the health insurance reductions, there's two components that pertain to the Board of Ed, the 1.3 and the 343,000, so that's 1.643. 
And then on, on the town side, there's the 455 and the 382. That's 838. So in grand total, those two numbers are 2,481,000. Is that, is that good? That's good. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. And my other question is, last week when Mr. Mayor presented to us on Thursday, we were looking at this variance analysis for the current year. And in here was this $500,000 of bond premium that was at least a, as part of this sheet p being potentially considered as um, an asset, if you will, for the current year, allowing us to have a more favorable balance at the, on June 30th, 2013, a few months from now. And I think I just, in the, my recommendation was at that point in time, if that was all true, uh, maybe we should take all of that for the upcoming budget. And I think I just heard you say that that's, that you, that you moved that over here into this sheet. Is that correct? So I'm, I'm seeing it here on page two of the document that Mr. Tetro just walked us through. And I think that's great news. That takes that $500,000, makes us be tighter current year, but we allowed, it, it allows us to take the benefit of it in this budget. So that, that's great news. I fully support that. When I'm a little lost on it, it might just be the, uh, the to-wing and throwing of all the numbers. With that $500,000 in this new version, we're still coming up at 3.747, which is roughly the same as it was last Thursday, 3.751. So can you just quickly walk us through how we added, I mean, I, I, I think it's contained within the lines, but we're making it $500,000 no, better. No, it's, 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 it's not. Um, not related, but in equal amount. One of the items we included in the prior document was a employee turnover savings of $500,000. That was based upon work prepared by the finance department that I was able to audit and review over the weekend and found an error in the formula. So we're no longer making that recommendation. Okay, now I think I see it. So just to be clear, on last Thursday's report, the reduction to contingency was 662000 which I'm hearing from you included the $500,000 that you just spoke about that you don't think now belongs there. Yes, sir. So that is out, and this $500,000 goes in, but net net we're within a couple thousand bucks of the same total number, including the 500K from the bond sale premium. That's correct, Mr. Cutter. Thank you. I think I got it. Okay. Um, all right, then. Uh, Next items to go to are expenditures on our Water Pollution Control Authority. Uh, there are a couple lines, I guess, at the bottom of page two, referring to tax collection rate change and the mm -hmm. Board of Assessment Appeals net grant change. I don't believe we as a board vote on those or that comes back uh, to the Board of Finance after the whole budget's been approved. Uh, those numbers will be reviewed and they will set the mill rate based on what the collection rate is at that point. Uh, but we felt important to include the collection rate change here. Um, and we can see that that collection rate change is actually uh, a uh, positive resulting in $907,951 uh, in increased revenue. And the collection rate being used for that is 98.83, which is consistent with our last three years of experience. Board of Assessment Appeals net grand list adjustment. And Mr. Mayor, I'm going to ask you to step us through the, the Board of Assessment Appeals net grand list adjustment in terms of uh, where that came from and what the impact is. Um, the town uh, 2010 grand list is based upon a revaluation. Um, there was a limited number of people, uh, residential, pro uh, residential property owners and commercial property owners, who have appealed their revised assessment. 
they have paid taxes, and we went down the list one by one, they've all paid 100% of their taxes for 12 and 13 year to date. The appeals will not be, will not completely be adjudicated until 2014. There will be a percentage of those people who will prevail. We've made an estimate based upon historical information on what that percentage might be and the financial impact of that percentage. And then for the 2012-13 portion, which will have to be uh, paid back to the appeal appellants, uh, we're recommending that that be accrued this fiscal year. It's a new accounting concept uh, for the town, um, but it's an appropriate gap uh, adjustment. Thank you. Thank you. Just a quick follow-up on that, and I think we touched on this last Thursday. This new accounting methodology and method change, while it's new and it's approved, have our auditors signed off on the change in accounting and us handling it this way? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, then moving on to WPCA. Mm -hmm. And again, some similar adjustments as to what we've seen in other departments. Um, the WPCA account uh, is self-funding out of the store fees they collect. So the following items don't affect our tax rate. Uh, but it is a requirement that this board approve um, those adjustments. So starting with WPCA, health insurance for uh, active employees, uh, a decrease of $20,413. Uh, also health insurance for active employees um, as a potential adjustment as a result of the bidding process. Uh, $17,386. Uh, WPCA for the retirement contribution for the town, uh, $6,013. This reflects the updated actuarial numbers. WPCA OPEB uh, for the town, uh, an increase of $2,238. This reflects uh, an updated number from our actuaries. WPCA Motor Vehicle Fuel and Lube, uh, an increase of $3,700. This is for octane and diesel fuel pricing adjustments. And WPCA Capital, uh, this is a decrease of $1,320,000. Uh, and this is basically showing a funding of $138,000 out of WPC operations and the remaining amount from the WPCA Capital Reserve Account. So it's something that would not hit their operating budget directly. Mr. Mayor, did I describe that correctly? Yes, sir. Uh, and that's for a total of $1,357,874. Okay. Any questions on that for my colleague? No. Mm -hmm. Not a question, just a comment, which I think I said also on Thursday was that this would be budget that was approved by the Water Pollution Control Authority or recommended by them with the adjustments or the updated numbers. Now, I think we had a motion on, uh, do we have a motion on the floor to amend this? For this. Okay. So then, um, if there's no further discussion, are we... Can I go back to one thing? Yes, certainly, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tetro. Mr. Mayor, can I go back to that earlier point I was making on the contingency $500,000? I just want to better understand it, if you don't mind. Um, I, I understand the first half of it, we're moving the $500,000 from next year or from this year into next year. I understand that and, that and the benefit of that. Can you just quickly walk me through the, the difference that you most recently found that's a very like some number and a very large number kind of going the other way. Was it just a, a different view of it? If it was, that, are you talking about the vacancy? yeah, talking about the vacancy that was in the contingency. Yeah, I, I thought I just said that very clearly. Try it again. There, Please. there was. Um, didn't mean that to throw, take it the wrong way. No, sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it's fun day. I was just trying to uh, <laughs> figure out how to say it differently, maybe. No, basically there was. Um, 
considerable amount of work done in the department to try to capture that number. And I received a schedules mm -hmm. and with supporting documentation from the department um, that produced numbers, provided information that calculated out to uh, when we used you know, some different ratio analysis that we, I think, a $675,000 potential salary savings, or $685,000, mm -hmm. which was consistent with fiscal year ended 2013, excuse me, 2012. Okay. So since we had a number the year to date for, uh, calculated out to that approximate amount, a number prior year that calculated out to that approximate amount, it seemed to make some sense to use that number uh, in the budget since it happens each year. However, when I had an opportunity this weekend to review the detail of the uh, work papers and the schedules that were presented to me, uh, there was a error in one of the formulas which overstated that amount by about 100%. So given that, uh, it seemed, you know, therefore given the diminishment of the amount, uh, it's, it seems sense to just take it off the table totally. Okay. I'm so not saying there's no potential savings. That was I'm my just saying, question, right? you know, we're now we're talking in the 200,000 range maybe, based upon this year's activity. Right. And so rather than just, so I, you know, Mike and I, Mr. Tetra and I discussed it and decided to take it off the table totally. Okay, so that was my next question. If, if the 500,000 is definitely not a good number, I, I get that. It's a spreadsheet, it's got formulas, and that's, and that's perfectly fine and acceptable. I was wondering if all of it needed to be reversed or if there was a reasonable portion that we could think about considering so that our 3.7 inches up versus staying flat. Yeah, the other uh, piece of information related to this uh, at the Board of Finance meeting last week, there was considerable discussion on this line item even be before we, this one we thought the number was, was, was a good number. And they had significant concerns about, remove, about including this in the budget uh, from two aspects, I think. One, it was kind of like the one built-in cushion, purposefully built-in cushion amount. Mm -hmm. And two, uh, it's, you, there was some concern that it was frequently used to offset overtime mm -hmm. and that no matter how they budgeted the overtime, it always seemed to go over. Right. And those are reasonable uh, questions and concerns and that's, a, and, and that's a very fair answer. Thank you very much because um, while it would be nice to make it larger if we could, it's kind of difficult to rely on the churn year after year as a benefit to your budget even if it does happen in most years, but it may not happen every year. So maybe it's too tight to expect it to happen or budget around it happening. I think that's what I'm hearing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, give, given the diminishment of the number, the level of number, it just didn't, it, it seemed like it might be a foolish thing to do. No, thank you for the explanation. But if, if I might expand on that a bit, I also think that, uh, I want to thank Mr. Mayor and the finance team for having actually quantified that. We've talked about kind of what the vacancy rate is on the town side. On the Board of Ed side, it's a little bit easier because you have kind of a start to the school year and you have X number of teachers that need to be in classrooms. On a town side, we have kind of a month by month. Uh, people come, people go, uh, and we've always asked, well, how many vacancies we have? And I'd suggest that's not quite the right question. The question is really how many vacancies we average and what's the, the net effect on that. And I think with this schedule put together, we now have a way to track it. And uh, so I think over time, that will help us get a firmer handle on it and know uh, from a quantification standpoint, uh, how much of that we can count on each year over a longer period of time. Okay. Thank you for the, for the explanation. That's a, that's a reasonable approach. Right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Are we ready to vote on these adjustments? I, let me yeah. just check, I think. Give me just a second here and make sure I'm on the page. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah, Kristen? Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, let's see. 
all in favor of the amendment to the budget as um, described? Aye. 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 All right. Unanimous. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for going through that. And appreciate that. Uh, and give credit where credit is due. Linda, thank you for putting all that together to make it easy to do. Um, and again, those will, items will be adjusted by line item as we go through that. Now that we're through that piece, <coughs> um, let's take a look at this, uh, for lack of a better term, department by department. Uh, yes, Chris? Before we do that, may I have the floor to make a few remarks? Go right ahead. Okay, thank you, Mr. First Selectman, and um, good afternoon to everyone here, my fellow Selectmen and all of you. Um, I just wanted to, before we get into the departments today, begin by uh, joining the First Selectmen in offering thanks to all the members of the Finance Department who have worked diligently to prepare the budget numbers so that we can deliberate and make our decisions with good numbers. So thanks to Linda Gardner and Caitlin Bossi, who's not here, and Bob Mayer, along with every member of the department and our first selectman who has worked throughout these weeks to get this budget where it is today. Thanks also to all those who have lent their voices to the conversation, particularly to those who offered thoughtful suggestions and solutions, real solutions. Within the freedom of that dialogue, dialogue I will say that there should be no place for the lack of civility and mutual respect that has occurred within some emails and even in some meetings during the budget deliberation process. I want to thank again Selectman Kiley for his remarks. As I said last time, we all have our good days and bad days um, and appreciate his leadership in civility here in Fairfield. When we have that lack of civility, this doesn't get us what we as members, all members of the town body seek, which is solutions that are fair, affordable, and achievable, both in the short and long term. I will take another opportunity to thank all the employees of our town. One writer to me and perhaps others expressed displeasure with those of us who are thanking the employees during budget season. We may not understand their jobs, agree with how they fulfill their responsibilities, or even think that they are providing a necessary service to our town. But I believe it is important to acknowledge that they work hard for the residents of Fairfield every day, and I will continue to thank them for what they are doing. In order to solve our mounting health care costs and come up with a fair solution for our long-term liabilities, we are going to need to work together with the unions and people who are the employees of our town. And when I say town, I mean Board of Education as well. Uh, pitting folks against one another doesn't achieve those goals. goals. Negotiations made in good faith with a clear purpose and form, firm resolve is what will. To the issue of health care, which we'll be talking about during this budget, I'm sure. As in every arena, costs are mounting and we need to do more to address this. Particularly, I will note my strong interest in the town and Board, Board of Education actively pursuing wellness strategies that are a proven success. I would rather spend more time preventing bad experience than reacting to it as we have had to this year, much like we have with the Workers' Comp Initiative that has proven successful. Again, I hope that both the town and Board of Education in uh, collective bargaining will work very hard in this area in coming contract negotiations. At the first budget hearing, I noted that we have to have a different kind of conversation this year. I believe that it's critical for us to look more proactively than to react. I support the first selectman in an immediate service level review and hope that we will take it one step further to go beyond just to look at what we have and how it fits or doesn't fit and look clearly about what the needs of our future will be. Elements of this budget, and one small example is the addition of 311 capabilities to the town website, are excellent examples of clear enha enhancements that are minimal in cost, but I believe worthwhile investments. There is no doubt that many families continue to struggle in today's economy, and we must continue to work diligently with our unions to be realistic about our current and future commitments. 
There is also no doubt that we are a community committed to a strong educational foundation for our children. And to that end, I thank Dr. Title and the Board of Education for their work to bring in a budget with as low as increase impossible given the health care costs. We have, I think, what may be a difficult conversation ahead of us today and in the coming meetings for the other boards. I believe firmly that each one of us, whatever our views on the issues, whether we agree or disagree, comes to this table trying to do what we believe is right for the people of the town of Fairfield. And thank you for the time to make the remarks. Kristen, thank you. Uh, just to... Uh, oh, great. Thank you, Mr. Tatcher, and thank you, um, Mrs. McCarthy, Fahey, for your comments. I certainly do appreciate them. Um, I just want to briefly say a couple things. Um, um, I'd like to echo some of the comments that uh, Mrs. McCarthy Vahey made, specifically in first, first by thanking everyone. I'd like to thank the administration and all the boards and commissions that have worked hard to make this budget process as smooth as, as, smooth as it has been to date. The Board of uh, Selectmen, the Board of Finance, and the RTM soon to be. So thanks to all their efforts, we are making progress. I'd also like to thank the Education Administration and the Board of Education for their great efforts along the way. and. Um, very much noticed and appreciated. Um, all department heads and town employees who have worked hard to find savings along the way, to make presentations, to give us their best available information, and to give us a budget that they feel best suits the needs of our town and is reasonable. The finance department has done a stellar job. Mr. Mayor, your staff, um, Mrs. Bossy, Mrs. Gardner, you've done a great job all along the way with information, handling requests, getting them to us timely and um, efficiently. So we certainly appreciate that. And last but not least, I'd like to thank all the concerned citizens who have contacted us in this, in this age of email and availability. It is refreshing to see so much interest in what we do and how we do it and where we end up. I think I'm well over 500 emails, probably closer to 1,000 in grand total. So obviously they aren't all answerable. But they're all read, they're all noticed, and they're all appreciated. So thank you for your input and thank you for your ideas. Just along those lines of receiving emails, and it is closer to 1,000 than 500, but there was one email that just came to me this morning that made a lot of sense. It was from a, um, a woman named Mrs. Pollock. And, you know, she has children. She's concerned about education. She pays taxes. She's concerned about paying taxes. She didn't take a real hard stand in her email, one position or the other do this, don't do that, spend this, cut that, nothing like that. All she basically said, which I think kind of sums it up for me, was, I ask when you make your decision today, you be as fair as you can when you reduce the proposed budgets. That's assuming that they're going to be reduced, but the comment about being fair, about being balanced and reasonable really hit home for me because we have a lot to balance here. The needs and citizens of our town, the services that we provide, the ability for us to pay for all those services and you know there's many other things that we balance is you know today's investment versus tomorrow's value whether it's investment in education today for the children's future tomorrow whether it's investment in our schools and our infrastructure that will support the values of your real estate tomorrow or when you sell the affordability issue can we stay can we not stay can we afford to pay can we not afford to pay they're all very important and critical issues to many people in our town and we as a board are very sensitive to them and we've listened to them all and done our best to be reasonable and to be balanced and to be fair. So thank you again. Thank you for the opportunity and um, I appreciate the time. Thank you. The, uh, in echoing my colleague's remarks, I think that um, we are one community. When we look at this budget, this budget really defines who we are, who we want to be uh, and where we're going. And I think that the most important thing um, and one of the great things that we've seen in the last two or three months is the amount of involvement from the public uh, letting us know what their voices are, what their concerns are, what's important to them. Because in, in the final analysis, we represent the town, we were elected by the town, and we need to um, make sure that what we come up with is a comprehensive solution. And uh, I will echo the comment on balance. That's the fine line we walk. Uh, balancing between what we're asking people to pay and what services we afford. Some of those services are things that people need, 
because of their current life situation. Some of those things are services people want uh, because that's why they came to Fairfield, that's why they live in Fairfield, and that's what makes Fairfield um, a fun place to be and, and a great place to live. Uh, as we look at this budget, there's a couple things that, um, a couple points that I do want to make. When we look at this process that's, that started back a few months, it's certainly this year more than most. It's been a journey. It's been a journey where we've looked uh, for new information, learned it, new information, uh, sharpen our pencils, uh, and look for how we can provide things and yet how we can minimize the cost of providing the same program. Um, it's important to realize in this budget, we're also making the right long-term decisions along with this, the right short-term decisions. Uh, specifically, uh, our pension plans are fully funded within this budget. One of the slippery slopes that other towns, other communities, not to mention our state, has run into is not funding those long-term liabilities, not funding the pension funds properly, not funding their OPEB or retiree medical uh, accounts properly, which then puts towns in a very serious situation of how do you make that up? You're basically passing those costs on the future generation. Well, we picked up pension and OPEB funds that had been funded by the generations or that had lived here before uh, in prior budgets. We are uh, funding those this year and we're, we're uh, passing on those fully funded accounts uh, moving forward. Our surplus or our savings or our rainy day fund. When I look at other towns around here, one of the advantages they have is many have funded that account, that fund balance uh, that goes by so many names, surplus, savings, or rainy day fund. Uh, and they haven't tapped that until years like this when it's a down economy and they need to tap it. So when I look at other tax increases or projected tax increases around, uh, and I look at where, where they're coming in, I'm like, wow, some of those are lower than what we're projecting. How did they get there? And one after another, as I followed up with the first selectman or mayor, I saw that they were using their surplus. Now that's legal, that's practical, um, but it's something we don't have an option for. Uh, we have already drained our surplus. We already we had a surplus of close to 9% back in 2002. We dropped that down to just over 3% in 2005. Uh, and then, as the Board of Finance uh, recognized that and said that's got to stop, uh, we have proceeded from that point to now to increase that back to just over 5%. The average AAA town in Connecticut has a 10% uh, surplus. That's 10% of their operating budget. Uh, if we had $27, $28 million in our surplus, we could take $2.7 million of that and lower our tax increase by a point. We're not able to do that. In fact, we're in the re reverse situation. In this budget, we're trying to put money into our surplus. We're trying to put money into our savings in one of the worst economies we have. So we're trying to run this town, manage this town on a, as low a tax increase as possible and still having to address the fact that we drained our surplus and used it during the good years so it wasn't available for now when we might really need it. Uh, so that's one of the challenges we have and when we compare to our tax rates, our expense rates to other towns, we need to look at both sides of that and realize that, that uh, there's some benefits there. There also, uh, we need to look and see that, that some towns around here haven't fully funded their pensions. Some towns around here have 50%, uh, 60% or 70% uh, funding on their pension levels, which means in the long term they have some si significant financial challenges ahead. We've managed to stay away from some of those. Um, we're also fully funding our internal service fund, uh, and again that was something we didn't always do in the past, but it means that we're living up to our current obligations and making sure that we're not just not kicking the can down the road, making sure that we're just not pushing those expenses or deferring those expenses off and artificially increasing taxes in future years. I think there are two challenges. One is to live within our means and one is to make sure that we just don't pass off those tax increases to future years and expect the next round of taxpayers uh, to live within their means and pay for us. Um, we have taken a look at the critical functions and, and making sure that uh, they are properly funded. And you'll see that as we go through. 
So just kind of to set the stage for where we are and what we're trying to accomplish with this budget. Uh, if I can, just to catch us up, Ms. Gardner, can you uh, fill us in on where we are? I want to make sure I'm looking at what are the adjustments we've made to date? Am I interpreting this right? I've got uh, three point uh, or three million five hundred eighty-two thousand three hundred and ten dollars as the, the grant general fund adjustments. By the way, I don't mean to suggest we're done. I'm just trying to catch up with where we are. So three three million seven forty-seven eight ten on the expenditure side. Okay. Correct. I see net, net of the revenue, and then you net the revenue out. So that's For a three million five eighty two three ten. Okay, so that's the net difference we've made to our, um, if you will, tax income that we need to raise. That's right. Okay, and that's just over one percent, if I remember correctly. I'm didn't understand. What was your? I don't know which way this button just, goes. Just trying, <laughs> just trying to catch up. I have a button problem yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to catch up with where we are um, what I've got and I'll, I'll refer my colleagues back to the, the overall sheet we had mm -hmm. and, um, the adjustments we just made should be consistent with the right hand column updated 2014 uh, and that means as of right now uh, we have a mill rate increase of 4.36 percent yes sir I didn't see that. And, and a revised uh, oh, expenditure total of $283,561,830. Could you run that again? $283,561,830. Right here, right here. Yep, I got it. Remember that the budget. The budget of tax increase will be greater than the expenditure tax increase because of the RTM's increase in the senior uh, tax relief program. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And again, just to be clear on that, the, um, the senior tax relief program was modified this year and it was enhanced. The income requirements were raised so that more people qualified. The payouts were raised so that more people benefited from that. That increased our budget or the allowance in our budget over last year by eight hundred thousand dollars all right so that's one of the um, increases um, that isn't obvious as you look at this because there's not a line item it's done as a reduction of revenue that brings the total amount of tax increase that we provide to our seniors and our disabled to four point five million dollars which, and, and I'm continuing to look, but I haven't found another town around here that comes anywhere close to that amount of tax relief provided to seniors. So that's one of the ways that we're, we're doing our best to uh, provide for those in our town that are most vulnerable, most in need, uh, and specifically seniors on fixed income that need the help. In dealing with any tax increases. All right, it was uh, suggested we take a look uh, perhaps at the Board of Ed first. Would anyone not? Are you guys okay with that? Absolutely. All right. Uh, any thoughts on the Board of Ed budget? Any thoughts? Have a question, Mr. Pilot? Thank you, sir. I just want to make sure that I'm looking at the right figures to start with. If I go to the Board of Education budget book on page 15, or stop me when I'm wrong, I'm looking at the proposed budget of 155,829,234. Is just to make sure I have the right numbers in front of me. That should be adjusted by the health care guy. I think. Yeah. All right. Healthcare and pension. 
Ms. Garner, can you give us the updated Board of Ed number, please? Okay. One moment. If I'm starting in, if I'm starting in the right place at the 155, 829, 234, backing out of that, the medical of 1.643 right. million, and then 144,488 for the retiree, I'm coming up with 154,041,746. So I don't know if that's correct. That's or right. That is. Now, the 1.1 million was already removed yeah, in the budget. Already okay, so let's, okay, let's just figure it out. I don't know. No, so I'm, I'm first, starting at a higher we place? Need we need to start with, start with okay. the first okay. selectman's budget. I'm sorry. That, that's why I'm asking. Kevin, we're both looking at the wrong column. That's fine. I just want to get on the same page. Nine forty one seven four six. That was uh, one fifty two nine four one seven four six. Seven four six. So if I take one point one from my number, I should get the same number. That's correct. Let me just check my arithmetic in front of the teachers. <laughs> Got it. So we stand adjusted by the first selectman's reduction to the 1.1. And the most recent adjustments that we talked about today, we stand at 152,941,746. Okay. Now, my, my real question was um, can, you, can you give me quickly what that percentage increase is over last year? It's not the 4.63 that was in the book. It's obviously south of that. Okay. 2.69. Thank you. You guys are in agreement? Okay. Thanks. Discussion on the Board of Ed budget. Mm -hmm. Should I add anything to that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have a comment. I'll make a comment. Make a comment. Um, as I stated in the beginning of my in my remarks in the beginning, um, I really think that the Board of Education has done a good job in terms of what they've brought forward. Um, I recognize, as we all do, the health insurance piece of that, which obviously it has been improved as, as it happens. Um, and I think that the 2.69%, though there are some, you know, a few things that got added when we look at the, uh, that 0.1% of other accounts, I think they really did a phenomenal job in terms of recognizing that this wasn't the year to try and bring forward a bunch of new initiatives. Um, so I'm really, I'm grateful for that. Just wanted to reiterate that. Um, and I think a 2.69% increase at this point is, uh, for the Board of Ed budget, is a reasonable request. All right, thank you, Kristen. I think that the, you know, again, I'm gonna go back to the, the uh, quote, Mr. Kiley from earlier, which is, which is balance is always the toughest thing. Uh, it's hard to find balance uh, and when looking at trying to uh, adjust uh, a budget and realize that, that 
the Board of Ed is, is 55% of, of that budget, um, and possibly a bit more if you talk debt service and, and some of the shared expenses. Um, so that the challenge uh, for Dr. Title and his team is that, that any percentage increase is a big number in terms of absolute dollars uh, when you look across. Uh, so it, the challenge with those bigger numbers is to, to keep those down and I think that uh, uh, it's obvious both last year and this year how hard uh, the Board of Ed is working to do that. No, sir. Okay. Yeah. Right. May I just actually offer one more? I, again, I'm probably re-emphasizing what I said before, but I probably, uh, it, it doesn't hurt. I think that health care obviously has been a big issue for us this year, and when we talk about our budget and we talk about, I think the first selectman often says, uh, we're a service industry, so personnel. Um, costs are certainly the driver within our budget and I think that as we look forward to negotiations um, as I said before I appreciate tremendously the work that our employees do and their professionalism um, and I also recognize that we are going to have to um, really work hard in our negotiations and um, work together with our employees to address those issues, particularly with health care. Um, we've talked, I should say, the conversation about um, pensions and retirement benefits has happened in many ways in other boards, so I focus today on health care, but I recognize that it's an overall issue. Thank you. And I, and I, I should, one more thing. I, I also believe um, that it's a long-term solution. It's not something that we're going to solve in one step and it's something that we need to continue to make steps towards as much as we would like to solve it today. It's something that we have to work on um, today and tomorrow and continue on. Thank you, Kristen. I think that uh, it's obvious for those of you that have followed the process so far that the Board of Selectmen and Board of Finance have had joint meetings uh, on our budget process until now. What's less obvious is the uh, uh, and I want to recognize uh, leadership in the RTM for reaching out and asking to talk about the budget sooner rather than later uh, and look for ways that we can kind of improve communication. The relationship uh, with the RTM has, uh, between various boards has not always been as smooth uh, as we might like and referring to uh, some of uh, Ms. McCarthy Vahey's comments from before, we're trying to improve the dialogue and try, trying to improve the quality of discussion because it impacts our entire town, not only for this year's budget, but for every budget going forward. Uh, we've identified certain areas, and again, looking at both, you've seen some of the trends that we've adjusted here with the Board of Ed. There are two areas that uh, I've been talking with the RTM about, we'll give them updates. One is any improved trending for the town or Board of Ed health insurance, much like we saw some adjustments this time. And unlike past years, we're going to take another look at those in April and see if we can pass those numbers on to the RTM. So if they can achieve that cost savings, we want to make sure they uh, are fully aware to do that. That would be a reduction in the budget, and they're in a position to do that. Uh, the second, as the Board of Ed moves forward with their evaluation of health insurance providers, there may be an opportunity for some additional uh, cost savings. Again, health insurance is one of the more complex uh, and fuzzy, uh, perhaps, uh, proposals to evaluate. Uh, I uh, appreciate the fact the Board of Ed is taking their time to do that, not time to uh, jump through any hoops there uh, sooner rather than later, but we should have those numbers available also before the RTM votes so we can take advantage, if there are any cost savings, we can take advantage of those cost savings. So I think that to me that's part of the uh, teamwork in terms of the various boards working together to make sure that, that we are not just, the Board of Selectmen isn't just throwing the budget over the fence to the Board of Finance. They're not just throwing it over the fence to the, the RTM. They were kind of working together to see where we can improve communication and consequently improve savings for the taxpayers. Any problem on that? Go ahead. Please. Thank you, Mr. Tetro. And I, I certainly appreciate those comments and wanted to follow up on them. Hopefully there will be some opportunities in the next couple of months with updated information, whether it's on the health care side or possibly even on the retirement side 
or something else will pop up that makes sense that we can evaluate that the Board of Finance and the RTM can take a stab at and um, I expect that to happen. This is a process. We work together as a team. We meet together, we get together, and we debate. But then each board has its own work to do. The Board of Select, then, then the Board of Finance, and then the RTM. So um, there's still a lot of work to be done on this. At the moment, it's one side of the coin is you can look at it and say it's a big budget, it's a big number, 1% only $1.53 million. And you can look at it that way. The other side of the coin ties back to comments I made at the beginning about investment, whether it's investment in schools, infrastructure, or the real estate values, and they all kind of work together and they drive one another. No train of thought is exactly right or perfect, and each can be defended and each can be shot down. So without getting into all of that, um, I, I, I'm at a place where I believe I can support this budget. And one of the reasons I got there was you know, being fair and reasonable always. But one of the reasons I got there was commitment. Um, we have a lot of commitments that Mr. Tetrell spoke about before, very eloquently about long-term financial commitments that our town has made to our pensions, to our retirees, for their medical, medical benefits, and to our current employees through negotiations and contracts. Things that we must honor because we're honorable people and we will do that. Um, they don't always sound good. They don't always look it on paper, right? You look at him and say, ooh, that's a big number. But the alternative would be to not honor an agreement that was made or to not honor a commitment that the town has. Now, things change. The world changes. The economy changes. Taxpayers change. And all that is true. But we have still gone down this path of honoring the commitments that we have made so that we don't push liabilities down the road to future generations and taxpayers and take an unfair benefit today against a group of taxpayers tomorrow. I do believe in that. I think it's fiscal restraint, and I think it's the right path for us to be taking. But on the other hand, we also have a commitment to our schools, and that's current commitment. And whether you agree with the dollars, whether you agree with the plan, whether you agree with what we're doing or whether we're not doing within the budget, that's all up for debate. I get that. But I don't take that commitment any less lightly or any more lightly. I don't take that commitment more lightly than I do anything else. Um, if we have a commitment to the long term, I think we have, to have, we have to have a commitment to the short term, whether we're paving our roads, you know, fixing the streets and sidewalks, putting police and firemen on the street to help us be safe, and to uh, maintain our schools within a reasonable, you know, within a reasonable budget. So we, we don't take our commitments lightly, and um, within reason, I think these budgets get us there, and um, I'm going to support it. Thank you. All right, um, unless there's anything, what I'd like to do is, is let's go department by department through this mm -hmm. um, and just see if there are any adjustments we have to make to individual departments before moving on. Um, uh, if, if we're not going to make any other adjustments on that, you want to vote on that? Yeah, we'll come back, oh, yeah. we'll come back and vote on that. Right. I'm looking at voting on this. Uh, and again, let me, let me just open that up to my colleagues. Yeah. I'm just going to vote on the overall budget. Uh, when we're done, when we have a final number on it, uh, in terms of the uh, inclusive of this, inclusive of the ad budget, I got it. Uh, okay. Unless you wanted to vote on part of that now, I'm open to yeah. process. I know it's been done. It's been done both, both ways. ways. It's it definitely been done both ways. So, what's the pleasure of the board? Whatever's the most efficient process. <laughs> which it seems would be if you we, wouldn't have a suggestion as to which one I, would be. my suggestion would be that we do go through um, and look at potential cuts within each department and then vote on it in totality at the end um, so make that, amendments as we go through and, and from that standpoint we've gone through the ed budget so we're done with any amendments on that if that's okay with group yes and so then we'll now proceed through the town departments uh, and finish with the WPCA budget is that fair? That's fantastic. Okay. Um, let's start with the first selectman's office. I have a and couple things. Ms. Gardner, if you could, I'm going to need your help on a couple of these, <coughs> and uh, if you'll permit me to start with that. I've got um, one on this. Okay. One is that um, a reduction in the uh, administrative assistant position from full-time to part-time. 
Is that the 85 percent one? Yes. A reduction in the administrative assistant position. Can you hear now? Okay. I'll move this up. From full time to part time, with a corresponding reduction in benefits, and uh, the partial reduction in Social Security is reflected by that. You, you, point of information, Mr. First Selectman. Go ahead. Uh, you're talking about the Secretary for Selectman position as it's listed in the budget book at the bottom of the Correct. list. Correct. Correct. And you're talking about moving it from 0.85 to 0.5. Correct. And reducing full-time benefits in accordance with that. Well, the full-time benefits would go away. That, yeah. And the yeah. Social Security would be partially reduced okay. for the... Yeah, it's not one of the ones that we have uh, okay. done prior to this moment, so give us a minute. Okay. So can I, can I maybe help them out with this? Because if, right ahead. if this is what you're thinking about doing here, which I support, that would also pull the 15% out of the finance department? That's exactly what I'm doing. Is that where you're going? No, I'm okay. Because they kind of go hand in hand, right? Yep. Exactly. So you would be looking at probably getting rid of that and moving this down to 50% and okay. doing the math. I'll, I'll redistribute it okay. later. Let me just give you the overall cost. Yeah, actually, it, if it keeps the math simpler, we could reduce that just 0.35 and that's... Oh, you could do that too. Yeah, okay. Okay. Why, we'll do why don't we just reduce it to 0.35? I'm just going to leave yours in. Would you keep, rather than doing two different... Keep, yeah. keep the 15% yeah. across gotcha. the whole just for Let's the math. Let's just take out 3.5 out of first lesson. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. you, want me, you want me to make a motion? Or do you want to do it? Uh, so I move that we amend this budget and change that position to 0.35 with the corresponding reductions to health insurance uh, and Social Security. And I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any further discussion while we're waiting for the numbers to come back? Yes, I, I also um, am in support of this and had considered this as well, in part because I heard clearly the conversation at the Board of Finance table with respect to the chief of staff position. And I recognize that this is uh, a potential compromise. And again, feel that that position is critical um, in terms of looking at innovations and efficiencies, in terms of supporting um, the collective bargaining process and interdepartmental communication and leadership and visioning, as I had said at that meeting. So it's my hope that in making this adjustment um, that the future boards will support the chief of staff position and recognize that there has been a compromise. Thank you. Do you have any I'm good. Just to uh, echo uh, okay. Kristen's comments, I think that um, in any business, when you're trying to improve the process, you not need, only need to work in the business, but you need to work on the business. And I think that's one of the uh, huge opportunities uh, uh, for the chief of staff position is to help us improve those efficiencies going forward. Um, we are already starting to learn what other towns are doing and I think there's tremendous opportunity both on the service and program side uh, but also in, in how they're putting together uh, their budgets how they finance uh, different operations we've learned a lot and that the truth is not always in just the surface facts of the headline you really need to look beyond that and we are committed to doing that we've also talked about that we're committed to working with the Board of Ed to look for what economies uh, that we can achieve through cooperative functions, uh, perhaps by combining different functions so that we can move forward with that. So uh, I see the chief of staff as being key to that. And again, using the balance word again, balancing what we're paying for today versus what we can achieve in the long run in order to get those economies, in order to keep the tax increases manageable in the years ahead, we're going to need the chief of staff function. Mr. Kiley. Are we on the Chief of Staff or are we still on the previous issue? Um, I think we're waiting for the numbers. Okay, so you, you guys move ahead. Um, on, on the Chief of Staff and on the uh, Budget Director, I know we had a discussion, or the Chief Fiscal Officer, I know we had a discussion the other night and um, at the Board of Finance, I think it was last week, and my thought on that was there was, there was plenty of folks that thought that we didn't need both. And I listened to both sides of it, and I've listened to Mr. Tatcher and spoken to him about this. And 
I can't quite get to the point where we don't need both because they both do fill an important role. Um, but we have been getting by for a while, so my thought was this, because it, it was almost a contentious conversation at one point at the Board of Finance level, but it got back to the points are, it got back to the point of, you know, what do we really have to have today and what can we live with or possibly phase in over time? Now, sometimes you're a victim of your own success when you do a great job for a period of time and people come to expect you to continue to be able to do that forever. And that possibly applies here. My thought was if there was a way that we could phase these two positions in and maybe only take half of the chief of staff salary for this year and half of the CFO salary for this year with the intent with with the intent of hiring them both as of January 1st so that they would both be in the budget for the 14-15 year at their full dollar amount but if we did phase them in and continued doing what we're doing through December 31st of this year there's even a few more dollars in here because half of these two salaries added together is significantly more still than the current chief of staff salary so the person in that spot would still be in an increased salary position for six months but we wouldn't have two people in those positions for six months and it would roughly save us yeah close to a hundred thousand dollars if we went down that road so I wanted to throw that out there not as a motion yet but at least for consideration that we consider maybe phasing both of them in or phasing one of them in um, to kind of as a kind of as a compromise because I know it was a pretty a pretty big discussion point last week now it's, it's always a challenge uh, when you're talking about uh, positions in general and there's really one person that's impacted by the discussion that person sitting in the room um, simply put uh, I guess who's ever working as chief financial officer uh, as of July 1 I can't think of a more important position we need uh, given the financial challenges given everything we've been through uh, given the financial issues that we're talking about uh, going forward I just I just um, I don't see we have how we uh, as much as we have uh, managed to get by I, I have a very difficult time seeing uh, how we do that with any less than full-time attention I'm amazed what mr. mayor has been able to accomplish in such a short time uh, in terms of new reports new controls uh, new process new procedures both uh, in, in that we've seen as we've gone through the, the budget process here but also as uh, in some cases we have had been available to everybody in terms of what we've done on the pension side the additional reports tools and information that the pension boards have so they can do a much better job managing two of our biggest assets both the pension trust funds and the OPEP trust funds um, so it, it, I have um, I guess difficulty seeing how we go on uh, much further and again I, I, uh, I know the, the hours and time that Mr. Mayor's put in mm -hmm. um, and trying to balance both and, and um, overall I see that as difficult to do okay um, thank you and I do certainly um, respect your position on that um, did we vote on the first amendment uh, not, not yet I think we're yet. still waiting on the numbers okay uh, those numbers are uh, for the first elections office salary and wages reduction of thirteen thousand and forty seven dollars can you can you repeat that mr. mayor salary and wages first elections office reduction of thirteen thousand forty seven dollars okay. health insurance first elections office reduction of seventeen thousand six hundred and fifty four dollars social security benefits first elections office reduction of nine hundred and ninety eight dollars and if you're going to take them together the finance department salary and wages reduction six four seven five health insurance benefit three one one six social security benefit four nine five so it's a total for the finance department of ten thousand zero eighty six total for the first elections office thirty one thousand six ninety nine grand total forty one thousand seven eighty five
Just to clarify, we're voting right now on the first selectman. The 31,000, right. <coughs> All right. Any further discussion? All in favor of that amendment, first line budget? Aye. All right. Aye. Okay. All right. Um, second amendment would be the. We already made those, right? Did we get the list of ten Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Part of the. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I've got a couple of them. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, just to, just to save some time and move this along, I've got a couple of things, and um, I am going to move to reduce the um, salary in the salary line in the first elections office by forty-seven thousand seven hundred and seventy-six dollars, and any associated benefits or FICA taxes that will go along with that. And the reason, the rationale is, I'm just looking to phase in that position as of December thirty-first of two thousand thirteen. I move to decrease the first selectman's office regular payroll by $47,776 and make a like, in, a like reduction in health and in social security contributions associated with that. And the reason is the phasing and in, phasing into the position as of year end. I could. Could you give us some background on how that might work? Just because I'm having trouble following all of it. Yeah, just simply, um, rather than do without the person, I'm trying to find a way to, if we can fade, if we can get through six more months, status quo. And I know, I, with all due respect to everything you've mentioned about what the work that's being done and how it's being done, and you know, all the efforts that are coming from that office, my hope is to phase in this position and bring it on full time as of, as of January 1st of 2014. So what it would mean in the end is that for six months, if, if, if this amendment were to pass and a similar amendment were to pass in the finance department, phasing in half of the CFO, or if you did one or the other, that we would, re we would remain status quo for six months. We would continue, you know, scraping along for six months, save roughly 100,000, probably 125,000 dollars between salaries and, and FICA contributions. And we would have both positions available to be fully funded on January 1st. So it's just inching along for six more months and having the one person do kind of two jobs for that six months. That's, That's the basic rationale. Nope, I understand. I yeah. think the, one of the challenges. May I have a point of order? Go ahead. Oh. Did, did, there wasn't There's a no second, second on the motion. That's correct. There's been so no second. I, may I second it for discussion purposes? Sure. I'll second it for discussion purposes, and then I'll turn it back over to you. Yeah. The um, one of the challenges, and and when you look at how the public sector works, so we actually spend an inordinate amount of time going through the whole budget approval process, uh, both for the town and the board of ed. And one of the challenges is to make any significant improvements. Uh, you really need to get those done in the off season. Uh, and the off-season from the budget standpoint is really uh, June through November, because after that you're kind of back in the role of compiling the budgets again. Um, and in trying to move the town forward and trying to look at how we improve our process, how we compare to other towns, how we work with the Board of Ed uh, on com consolidating services, how we do our service and program evaluation uh, moving forward, uh, I see the chief of staff is playing a key role in that, and I see that starting in, in frankly, uh, right from the start of the fiscal year. So it, it, I have uh, all things being equal, Mr. Kyle, I don't think your position is unreasonable mm -hmm. uh, from that standpoint, um, and I think it's worthy of discussion. The challenge I find is that, that we could lose a year on some of the really key initiatives uh, because we jump right back into uh, the budget season. And um, that puts, uh, in the short term, uh, that certainly, I can see that certainly achieving the cost savings you identified. In the long run, uh, I see that putting us a year or more behind on some of the initiatives that we need to, to kind of manage our costs and, and manage our direction, if you will, going forward. And that's, 
that's the, the difficulty. If it would just stop the function for a while and pick it up again. Mm -hmm. um, and that was my question for how did you see it working? Yeah. In terms of, um, yeah. I hear you. I'm just trying to, I'm looking through the budget just trying to find some reasonable chunks of money to either do without or phase in. So that was, that was the rationale. I think so it's a, I'm fine I think it's a reasonable question. Okay. So I don't mean to, to suggest Oh, no, that. I'm, it's, it's not contentious at all. It's just, it's kind of, you know, the budgetary review is all. Okay. I think I've already made my comments known, so okay. I'm ready to vote. Sure. All right. Um, the, then, um, all those in favor of voting on the first selectman's office as amended, just to be clear, that includes the package amendments we made we earlier. Have, or are we going to do it all? We well, we have to vote on my amendment. And oh. then I, I have another <coughs> one okay. as well. Sorry. A minor one. Yeah, uh, okay. It's 47,776 plus benefits. Okay. Um, it's so, oh. I think we know what the number is. It's 47,776 plus benefits. That's all right. All right. Are we good? Yeah. Okay. Are we clear on what the number is? And yeah. All right. All those in favor? All right. All those opposed? Okay. Um, and then I do have one more. Go right ahead. And I, and I, um, this is not a lot of money, but I did want to address the issue. And um, I'm going to move to reduce the part-time selectman salary by $660,000. $660. That's quite a reduction. I know. Can, can be interesting if we get, yeah. <laughs> Do we have that a would, second? Yeah. That would have a, second. Thank you. Thank you. And my, and my reason for that, and, and, and I know I, I, and I know I'm not alone on this is it's the $660 simply represents a 3% increase in the selectman salary. It's not a lot of money. It's 3% on 22,000 bucks. It's $660. But from a, let's set the standard or let's take a leadership position perspective. I just think personally for me, it makes sense to kind of practice what I preach. And that is be tight with money, be conservative, um, and you know, achieve some shared sacrifice. So that's the rationale for not voting to increase the selectman salary. And actually, independently, selectman Kylie and I both had come up with that. I had actually spoken with the first selectman about this prior to the meeting and had not had a chance to speak with selectman Kylie just because of FOI. So I'm, I also, leadership is one word and solidarity is the other. I think um, clearly it has a, a different impact on us um, than on our uh, town employees. Um, I, I, in addition, and just as a point of discussion, this is not a motion, um, was also considering a reduction in the um, travel and meeting budget to reflect a decrease um, in that area as well. Um, so I don't know if you would be open to a friendly amendment on that, um, or we can discuss that separately if you'd like to. My, my thought would be to um, take a $600 travel allowance decrease in line uh, 58-120. Sure, I'd, I'd like to get Mr. Tetchell's input on that. Any, should we vote on the motion? Are you ready to, I think. She's, she's you, asking if she can, if you Oh, you want to amend the amendment? amendment? Do, you are you open to a friendly amendment or would you like to vote on the original motion and then we can discuss that? Separately? Oh, I would rather vote on the original motion. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I, I misunderstood well, your let's, question. Okay. I'm sorry Just about that. Just a management standpoint, let's do that to keep it simple. Right. Uh, do we have the numbers we need from Ms. Gardner? Are we set? 660 bucks. Yeah. For the selectmen salaries. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I I move that we further amend the first selectman budget by uh, line fifty eight one twenty uh, travel and meetings by six hundred dollars. And again, this is along the same lines as Selectman Kylie's motion. And specifically, you're looking at the 
the travel, travel allowance the for the selectmen. Each of the selectmen. And yes. I am certainly open to discussion and um, willing to do that on my own if that makes sense. Again, the difficulty of this is that um, that's always the difficulty of the three member board. And then perhaps the simplest way to do it is if, and, and basically what we're talking about is there's, there's travel expense money for each of the three selectmen in that. Um, why don't you make a motion to, uh, for your portion of that? And sure. I will, I'll friendly amendment to uh, change amendment. the third. I'll motion. make the motion in this way, $300 uh, reduction in the travel allowance from the travel and meetings budget line 58 120. All right, I'll second that. Right. I'm fine. And that, yeah. At that point, that would be reflective of, can you give us some background on what that is? The background on that is that um, all town employees uh, are, well, Kristen, actually, where, do you want me, the, where do you the want the money to come from? The, bu the money would come from the travel allowance for the selectmen, in this case, for my. Okay, that's what I was trying to get to. Yes. Okay. Thought it was clear. Sorry. Okay. That's one second. Any further discussion? No. That's All right. We can do that. That's fine. Yeah. Right now, we're voting on Kristen's I'm I'm offering a three hundred dollar reduction for just for me because I haven't been able to discuss this with you and unfortunately oh, oh no we, I would do it for both I'm sorry I, okay. I didn't catch the math That's okay what, so three hundred dollars would be for each of us if we did each of us it would be a six hundred dollar reduction that was my fine. I, I okay. thought that's what you were doing I, I wasn't following okay the math. gotcha that's so just trying to clarify oh, okay that's fine so back to my original motion which was six hundred dollars. I which gotcha would be now. a reduction of $300 for each of the selectmen in the travel and meetings allowance in line number 58120. Right. And that has been seconded, or do we need that second? I think we do a second. Second. Oh, okay. we seconded. All second. right. I thought it was. Okay. Any, Linda, do you have that? Any yeah. further discussion from the board? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thanks. Sorry about the confusion. No, that's okay. No problem. I wasn't clear. <laughs> uh, Kristen, any further comments on the first weapons? Uh, no. No. no I'm good. good. I'm good. Bye. All right. Um, we're not going to vote, but we're going to come back and we'll do it overall. Yeah. Okay. I think that makes sense. As long as they're keeping tally, I think yep. we're good, right? Linda, you just make sure you're keeping up. If we get too far ahead, let us know. Next up, town clerk. Any adjustments there? Should you consider? I have none. No. Okay. All right. Next up, administrative services. Any uh, discussion there? Okay. Good. Next up, registrar of voters. Any discussion there? No. All right. No. Next up, zoning board of appeals. No. no. Next up, town planning and zoning. Let me stop for a second here. No, that, I have an answer to that question. Okay. Uh, that was, that, that, yeah, this was a little. Yeah. Next up, probate court. Okay. No. Next up, historic district commission. No. Next up, conservation. No. Next up, shellfish commission. Next up, legal services, and I have a motion there. Yeah, I do too. Go ahead. Um, in discussion, well, I make a motion to reduce uh, legal services by $50,000. A second. Second. All right. Um, by way of explanation, I've had a chance to talk with uh, Don Ross, our tax assessor, also uh, town attorney uh, Lesser, uh, and looking at both how the, the tax appeals are progressing, what we think we can get done this year, uh, 
we had, had been worried that because the uh, judge who handles most of these had a broken leg that we would not be able to get as much through fiscal 13 as we planned that would push more work off of fiscal 14. Um, it looks like they have handed off some of the cases who were able to get uh, some more work not all of it it's not but some more work done in, in fiscal 13 uh, which potentially then reduces the amount we need for fiscal 14 their estimate of that was approximately fifty thousand dollars mr kyle thank you mr tetro i can certainly support that fifty thousand dollars but it was my intent or at least my thinking that this budget can absorb a bit bigger number than fifty thousand um, dollars the explanations that we were given of the seven hundred and forty five thousand dollars which is roughly two hundred thousand more than the current year was it was broken up by labor tax appeals and other matters it, it was my hope that we could just you know run tighter do more with less and and shave you know at least a hundred thousand dollars out of this budget which would still leave it at 645 which is still a hundred thousand more than the current year and hopefully we could live within that that budget and, and find ourselves a hundred thousand dollars of savings I've got less information and rationale than you do but it's just a, it's just a very large increase two hundred thousand dollars so it it jumps out as um, something we can take a closer look at yeah I think that the challenge and just looking at the numbers that you have I wouldn't disagree with that conclusion the challenge is this this budget absorbed uh, significant cuts last year if you look at the actuals we're coming in kind of on track with where we projected to be and we're over budget um, legal services unlike many departments there's a certain amount you can control and a certain amount you can't which is why we broke it out by different components uh, for this year and certainly uh, there's a certain uh, amount of variable ver uh, variability in each year in terms of uh, how many uh, general liability cases we get which are commonly referred to in the slang as slip and falls uh, we do know that we have uh, at least five labor contracts to negotiate and possibly one uh, arbitration with those maybe two we do know that uh, we still have a large number of tax appeals to go to not so much in the numbers but in these are the more complicated cases which is the, one of the reasons they weren't dealt with sooner in the process they are typically the commercial rather than residential appeals uh, which take a little bit more time and money uh, to go through that so my caution there is uh, and that's why I sat down with uh, the assessor and, and uh, our town attorney to see what was possible because my concern is we can cut that but we may not achieve the savings uh, because of the amount of work to be done so Kristen just a question along that line um, to Ms. Gardner and Mr. Mayor. What are the most up-to-date actual figures we have for expenses this year? Because I would, of course, love to be able to cut more money from this as well. I'm, I'm with you, Mr. Kiley. Okay. My Thank concern you. is, if, is it a realistic, can we really do it? Um, Linda's looking at the exact numbers. We're at, uh, through February, we're at 77 percent used. Um, the budget is uh, 537. We've used uh, 414,000. Um, so we're we're like 11 percent over budget. So if that continues throughout the th through the rest of the year, we'll end up the year at about uh, 590 thousand dollars. So you're saying that at the end of this year, our total expenses in the legal area will be 590,000, continuing at the rate we're on. That's about right. That's about right. Based about upon what Munich shows, assuming it's prop, assuming that it's fully uh, booked through uh, February, should be by now, right? And, just another follow-up, if I may, question. Uh, is there any reason to believe that that run rate will change? In other words, that there may be a spike there 
anticipating change in that rate between now and the end of the year to take that? Yeah, no, I, know you, um, I know I'm asking you to look in the crystal ball, Mr. Yeah, Mayor. No, so. it's, uh, I don't know what the lag is in these reports. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's probably a month lag. Um, you know, in, in 2012, we spent uh, $820,000. Um, uh, if, if I might, I think that um, one, uh, Mary Carol Marley, did you have some yeah. information that might help? I think that the challenge in, in looking for um, ways to lower this, uh, we can certainly lower it. I think the challenge is picking a number that, that doesn't um, just keeps us in the ballpark of where we might end up. So uh, mm -hmm. the number that I was thinking about had been 50,000. Uh, if we want to look at an adjustment to that, given the, given the runway, my concern with if those reports are dated February, that's when they're run. It's really a function of when the legal bills come in. Um, which drives that more than kind of a daily rate. It's not the same as town employees where we know that they're getting paid every week. Um, so if the, um, I think maybe the simplest way to say it, if, if you want to take a look at revising that $50,000 adjustment upwards. Um, I, I go to 100. If, I'll certainly vote for the 50, but I would take it to 100 if there was support. Trouble is, we could vote for the 100 and feel good about it, but I'm not sure about being able to achieve it. And um, try 75, going one. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. The um, any thoughts? I have a lot of thoughts. I. Uh, trying to decide any, which any you can share. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, I would love to be able to reduce this line um, by 100, assuming that we can achieve it. And I, as I said a moment ago, it's the crystal ball issue here. Um, but I, I think the other issue is we have some estimates based on what we believe we're going to be facing. We recognize that there are some matters that we don't know, as our human resources director just told us. So there's some level of um, uncertainty, the other category, I guess. Um, and we also know that we've had a lot of legal conversations lately with attorneys. I, I do, I definitely support a reduction in this budget. Um, I don't know that I could go to, to 100,000, but um, I, I want to support a number that's achievable. And if what I guess the first selectman is saying that 50,000 is definitely achievable. That's great. We're not sure about anything more than that. Well, just to be clear, should, the, the, in, in sitting down with the assessor, with the town attorney, uh, they were comfortable with the 50,000 would be a goal. I'm not saying we can't get to 60 or 70 or 75 type of thing. It just, uh, that's what they were comfortable with. It perhaps um, at the risk of encouraging Mr. Mayor, if we look at 75,000. That works that for me. Yeah. All right, so I'll do it. If um, I'll withdraw my 50,000 motion, if the second will get withdrawn. Withdrawn. Uh, we'll make another motion for a $75,000 adjustment. Second. All right, uh, since we have discussed it, unless there's anything more, all those in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 Ms. Gardner, do you have that? All right. Um, Miscellaneous contingencies. Next up, human resources. Uh, next up, community and economic development. Next up, Harbor Management Commission. Uh, next up, oh, contingency. Yes. 
All right. Um, I believe we've made some adjustments in this as part of our package yeah. adjustment. Correct, Ms. Gardner? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we have this. What's the revised contingency number, please? I think it's still at uh, 662 number. Fairfield Counseling Services. Next up is the Discovery Museum. Next up is the Greater Bridgeport Regional Council. Next up is the Audubon Society. Next up is the Greater Bridgeport Transit Authority. Next up is the Fairfield Museum. We'll discuss that after we leave. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having us here. Uh, next up is the Fairfield Veterans Advisory and Information Service. Next up is the South Ford, uh, Southwest Connecticut EMS Council. Next up is the Southwest Regional Mental Health. Next up, uh, oh, this budget has been reduced the Southwest Regional Communication Center that was actually moved into one of our other, other budgets. Yep. MCC, I believe. Yep. Got it. Uh, Council of Churches Janus Center. Next up is Grassmere by the Sea. Next up is Sullivan McKinney Elder Housing. Next up is the Kennedy Center. Next up is the Mill River Wetland Committee. And next up is the Pilot House. And next up is Center for Women and Families. And next up is Private School Bus Transportation. All right, we move on to finance. Mr. First Lesson, yes. may I, for just a moment, um, since I know we are, we don't have any amendments in these, but I just wanted to comment on um, the not-for-profit, since I was not able to be at that meeting in the beginning of the meeting, if you would just give me a moment. Um, I support the ongoing conversation with of the work of the committee, the nonprofit committee, to continue to work with you to look at how we review um, these budgets. As we in the committee talked about every year, it is certainly the prerogatives of each of the boards, the Board of Selectmen, the Board of Finance, and the RTM to make uh, any adjustments they see fit. Um, I have often spoken in support of these entities because of the services that they provide for us in a cost-efficient way. Um, so I, again, hope that we can continue that conversation and looking forward to how we assess those. And that, I think, goes to the service level review and the sense of what's important for us to do as a town. Thanks. Thank you. I think one of your ongoing points has always been if we're going to eliminate certain services, we want to make sure that those are services the town wouldn't also have to pick up uh, to continue to provide for our um, citizens. It's also uh, I remember one of the refrains from our one member of our state delegation uh, in looking at state uh, social services provided. Um, uh, Representative Wong is, is uh, continually points out that nonprofits do it more efficiently, more effectively, and 
uh, he's lobbying strongly for the state to offload services uh, to the nonprofits. Moving on, finance, finance department. Uh, we do have one adjustment already there, but I think we need to the point officially make it. Well, no, if we reduce the other one from 8.5 to 3.5, I think we're good here. Did we? Okay, we're, we're good here. We did that, the other one to 3.5? I think we did. We, we, okay, then we're good here. All right, so we don't need to make an adjustment here? Yep, then we're fine. All right. Um, I just want to follow up on the conversation. No, oh, just no. a point oh, of information. My, forgive me if I misunderstood. My, the other adjustment was from 0.85 to 0.35 or to 0.5. Five. Five. Oh, percent. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I that's what I thought. I, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For clarifying. Because we were just. We were, we're looking to make sure, I think our intention was that there be a 0.5 person right. in the office of the first selectman. Mm -hmm. So, okay. You're right, you're right. And it came to 11,000. I have it written down somewhere, guys. Oh, it's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you can just take it from there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You gave us what benefits and everything was 11,000 and change, but wasn't it? It's uh, salary and wages, 6475. Healthcare three one one six. Social Security four nine five. Total one zero zero eight six. Should we have a motion for that? So moved. Uh, second. Second. Thank you. Right. Any further discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. <coughs> Any further discussion on the finance department? Yes, and briefly because we discussed this before with the um, chief of staff position, but I did want to make the other half of my first failed amendment, which was the phasing in of the two positions. They're currently merged. I was thinking that we could save 125 grand by phasing them in and hiring them halfway through the year. Um, the number on this one would be, let me get back there. Hold on, I just had the page and I lost it. All right. Yeah, it's one. It's half of one thirty-seven. So my, my motion, I move to reduce the salary line by sixty-eight thousand six hundred and ten dollars, and the associated benefits and FICA contributions or Social Security contributions from the finance budget. And the rationale is the half of this one plus the half of the other one gets you to about one hundred and sixteen thousand. That plus benefits gets you to one thirty, one forty by phasing things in. So that was the second half of the motion from the first selectman's office. I don't hear a second. I'll second That's okay. I mean, we don't need to discuss it. I think we've already talked it through. May I will we second it because I do have one, one okay. point of discussion. Okay. Um, I think, again, though there are different positions in different roles, we have um, cut back the uh, secretarial position here. And again, um, I think that it's critical that we have these functions in place. So that my intention in terms of making the reductions in those areas were as a compromise. Um, I also respect what Mr. Kiley's trying to do, but I don't support the motion. Thank you, ma'am. Just uh, as a follow-on comment of the, of the positions, given the financial challenges that the town is facing given the uh, amount of work we have to do in addressing our short-term issues and our long-term uh, issues, keeping that balance and jumping on those right away. Um, the, I was uh, I'm really, uh, I think it's critical for the town to have, uh, get back to a full-time uh, CFO as soon as we can within this process. Unless there's any further discussion, no. are we no. ready to vote? We are. All in favor? Opposed? And again, Mr. Kyle, I appreciate the conversation. I don't sure. No, I was just trying to find a middle position from last week. A so. reasonably creative approach. Thank you. Uh, next up, purchasing. Any comments? Mm, no. Nah. Yeah. Next up, the assessor. No, we're good. I was just a note on the uh, assessment piece. Mm -hmm. okay. Tax collector. <laughs> no. All right. Infra 
information technology. Um, may I go back to, with your permission, the finance department, please? Um, sorry, folks. All right, and looking at finance, um, one of the opportunities here is that um, with the reductions we've made in our budget, we had targeted our supplemental contribution to surplus uh, to be in the 5% neighborhood. Um, with the reductions we've made, uh, we've gone from the original budget uh, down to roughly um, 262. Um, oh, we've done a significant adjustment there. So I'm looking at reducing the a contribution to surplus from 925 um, to 650, 675, 675, excuse me, 250, $250,000, which still means we're making a supplemental contribution. Uh, it's just um, less aggressive than the 925 number. Second. Second. Any further discussion? It's a quick follow up. Go ahead. So that's um, that's good to hear. I just wanted to, um, to, as Mr. Mayor, I'm sure you folks have already spoken, but since I was not in the room, are you comfortable with this adjustment to the supplemental contribution to surplus by reducing it to $250,000? I think what I can say is that um, given the projected current projected state of the budget that would still allow the the uh, unassigned balance as a percentage of general fund expenditures to increase by eight hundredths of a point. Okay. Thank you, sir. down minus 250 that's 725 minus 56 75 good sorry about that no nope. getting back tax collector information technology I think is where we left off mm -hmm. oh sorry um, thank you we need to vote on that amendment um, any further discussion no all in favor aye, aye. aye. Thank you, Mr. Carley. Okay. Moving on, back to information technology. Oh, gosh. Can I ask a question? Go right ahead. Okay. I, I have a question here and a, a, a possible amendment, but I'm not sure. I'm a little confused on one thing. When I look at the fees of professional services, um, I know there were there was a pretty detailed explanation of what they were on a line item basis during our presentation by um, department head Leslie. And they're going up by almost $200,000, um, $180,000 actually. And I believe one of the items that I wrote down from that list was the town side piece of the munis system upgrade for about $155,000. Is that is that accurate? And is that project on track? Or is there just, do you have any more visibility on that? Because I have a note that we could possibly hold or carve that out, but I don't know if my note holds water at the moment. Right. Uh, so let me just confirm with finance where it is, and I see Mr. Leslie's in the room, so perhaps he can elaborate further, but finance, can you just fill us in on where that number stands at the moment? Yes, during, during the joint board of finance, board of slogan meetings, there was a very convoluted conversation about yeah, that. So uh, pardon my about confusion. That specific uh, right. line item. Right. Um, and subsequent to that time, uh, we issued a uh, revised, not a revised, but a, a document uh, that shows the Immuna software is a service on a five-year investment comparison schedule. And because by going to the cloud, going to the outside service, there's some uh, future benefits from uh, uh, hardware acquisitions that we'd otherwise have to. 
uh, incur. Right. So basically, um, what you're looking at though is for this fiscal year, the out of pocket cost for the fiscal year that we're budgeting for, not this fiscal year, excuse right. me, fiscal year 14. Mm -hmm. The out of pocket cost of, uh, of that uh, moving to the cloud is $37,000. And I could go through the benefits of doing so, or Mr. Leslie could probably in greater detail than I. But that's the dollar impact. Mm -hmm. That's the combination of on the Board of Ed side and the uh, town side. And, okay. and if I might just elaborate, one of the things that going in the cloud did was allow us not to invest in servers or hardware. Correct. We have a fixed life. So uh, it saved us on the capital investment side. Okay. So back to my question, is there any opportunity there for us to spend less money next year in this line whatsoever due to that project? No, sir. I mean, I wouldn't think so. I mean, it's, uh, I, I think this project is important to the Board of Ed, I think it's important to the town, and if you don't do it, you save $37,000. If, 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 you, if you don't go to the cloud, the savings would be $37,000. Uh, that's. I don't know if that's quite correct because we'd have to buy hardware to accomplish the same function. The net, yes, the net out-of-pocket savings is thirty-seven thousand dollars if you don't do it. I guess I'm, I don't have enough information to make a motion, but I'm still a little gray on what we're doing and what and, and where the numbers are. It was my understanding from that meeting that the numbers were different, and I thank you for the update. I do appreciate that. I appreciate the project as well. Um, I just came away feeling that I didn't know enough about it or that the project maybe wasn't where it needed to be on track or on time or possibly even in its entirety and we might be able to find some savings there. No, no, I, no? I, no. Okay. It, this is a project that hasn't been started yet. Right. It's a project that, uh, that uh, to, to develop the costs, uh, Nancy Burns with a little bit of my involvement went through a, uh, a negotiation process with the Munis people to get the number that we got. Um, and when you look at the, the total all in, what you'd have to buy, what you wouldn't have to buy, if we don't go here, we save $36,982, uh, but we lose all the benefits that would come with the project, uh, which include it, it serves as a, as a uh, disaster recovery backup site uh, it allows uh, access from anywhere for credentialed users. Uh, it uh, reduces the uh, maintenance burden on the software, uh, the uh, IT staff and the Board of Ed. Uh, provides multiple backups for system performance. Um, you know, and I mean, guess, and there's more. I mean, it's, okay, no, that's we, fine. And, and whatever we, don't, that, we don't have to, I guess, I, the other thing is we don't buy certain hardware and we have no right. need for certain software licensing charges that are currently in the budget. So the okay. total offset net is okay. 36900 bucks. Okay, thank you. All right, moving on. Next up is Board of Finance. Next up is unemployment compensation. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Go ahead. Next up is public safety, in this case, fire. And I do have uh, a couple of adjustments there. Uh, make a motion to um, remove from the capital request, uh, one staff car, and the uh, second component would be the uh, hydraulic lifts. Second. 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 All right. In talking with the fire chief, um, he indicated that since our initial discussion, he's had the hydraulic lifts certified again, uh, so they will perform uh, adequately for the next year, and that. Um, he could delay the pur purchase of the staff car for $36,000.
Uh, and I thank the chief for being creative and going back and looking for opportunities. Um, so that's about 100, 101,000? Correct. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor of the amendment? Aye. Aye. Any further discussions on the fire budget? No, I think we already got the overtime right in the big bucket. The big, uh, we did we did some adjustments on moving uh, two of the replacements up to the current year, so we didn't have to get into the fiscal 14, so we had a reduction there in fiscal 14 in yep. payroll, overtime, and training. Right, I got it. Yep, and I think those numbers are reflected on the early sheet. Yes, part of our package sheet. Right, good. Thank you. Uh, next up, police, and I believe we've made one change as you, uh, earlier in terms of the advertising component, the $3,500. Mm -hmm. Any further changes on the police side? Um, I'd like to talk about that if I could, please. Um, Chief McNamara came before us last Friday, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Thursday, I'm sorry. And he was talking about, um, he, he came to us um, in reference to the new hires in the budget. Um, as they pertain to implementing our new um, safety program in conjunction with our schools. And we had a really robust conversation about it, and he was extremely forthright. And in, in, this, in, in response to some comments at the previous Board of Finance meeting, in fact, there were questions by me, I had asked him if there was a chance that we could go find some grants out there when we uh, bring new people on, specific for school safety or town safety. And at the moment that, at that night, he did not know, and what I've heard from him since on Thursday was that there might be some money out there. And, and he might be able to, without jeopardizing the school security project at all, or delaying it, which is not his goal or mine, and we had, we, we had agreement on that. I believe what he said on Thursday was that there are some grants that are out there that they, that they are going to aggressively seek. They would be sought in the short term and hopefully we would have an answer on them at some point in the next few months. However, in the meantime, he, he didn't want to jeopardize the potential, and I wish he was here because I hate to speak for somebody who's not in the room, but um, there was a potential that if we did all the hiring today, that we could jeopardize our qualifying for a grant tomorrow. Meaning if we went ahead and did it, they could say, well, too bad you've already done the hiring, you don't qualify for the grant. And if that was available to us, nobody would want that, right? So his, his compromise suggestion that he came to us with on Thursday was, why don't we go ahead and hire the sergeant, the supervisor who would be running the program or administering it or being in charge of it, and hold off on hiring the three officers for the short term and fill the difference in short and use overtime in the, in the meanwhile to initiate the program and implement it, work with, with Dr. Title's team and you know, put the program forward into all the schools as it wants, as they want to do. And I believe he had mentioned, and uh, Mrs. McCarthy Behe was there, that he would, I believe he said $250,000, but I also believe, according to my note, that that was inclusive of the sergeant's salary of whatever it is, um, page 181. Yeah, sixty-seven thousand three eighty-five. So we did ask him very directly, would, would this impact the program negatively? And I came away with the answer being no, that they could still do it, get it rolled out, make it work, safeguard the schools, and work with the administration on both sides of the aisle, or both sides of the town, to uh, safeguard the schools and the buildings, while still allowing us to apply for the grants. And if they come, that's fantastic. And if they don't, then we can address it with direct manpower at a later date. Therefore, we wouldn't preclude ourselves from being eligible we could save ourselves some money in the short term on the hirings and in the long term on some of the pension liabilities and health care benefits that we would be incurring with any new hire. So it seemed like a reasonable, thoughtful approach. If, did I characterize his comments? Uh, yes, and I, the chief has followed up uh, with an email and, oh. and our verbal discussions kind of confirming uh, both uh, his um, proposal and your recollection. Thank you. It, so. It's a good day. Uh, Kristen, do you have any <laughs> further comments on that? 
just a question. I guess when we saw him on Thursday, right. um, he did provide that number. I just was checking my notes as well, and I just wanted to check in with our chief fiscal officer um, uh -huh. if you had had conversations. Uh, it uh -huh. sounds like Mr. Tetro did, but just to, uh -huh. you know, I know how you like to check all the calculations on everything. <laughs> I, 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 I like that too. I have had no discussions with the police department regarding this issue. I can go back to my notes, and they could be wrong, and I, I wish Chief McNamara was here to answer, but my, my note told me that it would be $250,000 less the price of the sergeant, which is the 67 and the benefits. I'm just going to call it 80000 just to make the round number, and then hire the person at the 67 plus benefits, call it 90000 excuse me, and then the difference, the 160 of the 250 would go to overtime. Is that how you remember it? Or was it 250 plus the sergeant? I think it was 250 okay. inclusive of the sergeant is my recollection. I, I, I so believe got, so as well. So we've got the numbers broken out here. So you've got three new officers at that new sergeant there. So if I can interpret your motion, you're suggesting we uh, move the dollars for the new officers to an overtime line and then reduce the uh, benefits, the health care. Yeah, uh, I think that's that, it, right? Wouldn't that do it? Uh, because not, what, what you're saying is keep this, yep. don't touch this, but don't hire these guys today, but move the difference between 250 and this to well, overtime. Just, yeah, just move the or you could simplify it just, just move the 161. 160. You could do that as well. To overtime. Because it's um, almost the same math, right? It's 250 and then minus. And we save um, yeah, it's all, benefits. Yeah. Ms. Gardner, are you following this discussion? And do you have, are we relating the numbers properly? Right. You're going to increase the overtime to 51050-51055. What's your pleasure? Uh, or do you want to park it somewhere where yeah. you can see overtime, it? Overtime, overtime earnings. Okay, five one zero five zero. You're going to. Uh, what what traditionally goes into overtime earnings versus overtime replacement? Overtime replacement is uh, overtime to replace people that are out sick on vacation, that type of thing. Uh, yeah. Over overtime earnings is when the, the officers at the end of a shift and they're involved in filling out a report or on an investigation or something and then they can't discontinue their efforts. I think if we call these vacancies, we could put in a replacement if we, because it's not in the shift work, this would be new work per se. Yeah. Yeah. Wherever it makes sense since to park the money. Make, yeah. Okay, so why don't, since we have to make a motion, why don't we put it in overtime earnings replacement? Sure. And Mr. Carr, I believe your motion was to move that, move 161,000 into that? Right, so why don't I just make the motion? I move to reduce regular payroll, line 51010, by 161,000. Hold on. Seven, six, $763. Plus reduce the associated benefit lines that are calculated against that. And to increase line 51055 overtime earnings replacement by a like amount $161,763. So the net net savings to the budget would be whatever the benefits and social security contributions would be. Well, yeah, I don't I'll, I'll let you figure that out. Yeah, that's, I don't believe our police pay okay. social security. Okay, that's right. Okay. So it's, that's my motion. I'll second it. Any further discussion? Question is, could you give us the actual figure for the benefits number reduction? The total savings would be 59000 approximately, $59,640. Follow-up comment. I um, support this idea because of what Chief McNamara said at the meeting. Um, however, I would like to ask that um, the chief fiscal officer and the finance department just follow up with him and um, check in on that to make sure that all the math adds up and yeah. if necessary any adjustments can be made at the uh, board of finance table tomorrow night. That's a great idea. 
Right. Any further discussion? Mm -mm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Ms. Gardner, you have all that? Mm -hmm. Good. No. Street lines too. Next up, street lights. We did adjust those earlier, correct? As part of the package. Right. Yes. Hydrant and water. Next up, emergency management. Uh, there was a question earlier, I think, on where one of our line items had moved, and it had moved here under communication. Um, 34,000. I thought that too, but I thought this was the code red, the 34,000, and I think the, that's, that's the code, that's code red. The code red. Sorry. So the, yeah. that, that number ended up in, um, not, sorry, here we are. ECC is where it, is where it ended up, the other number. Yeah. Oh, no. Correct. Communication right. C, Matt. Got correct. it. Yep. Sorry. Got it. We're good. All right. Emergency Communication Center. Public works. Oh, I've got something on this. Okay. Public works administration. Right. Next up, public works operations. Right. Go ahead, Mr. Kiley. Thank you, Mr. Tetro. Um, I have a backup for a minute here. Um, earlier, you know, we've earlier I had made some comments about commitments and honoring commitments and I think that's very important a number of years ago when I was on the board of finance I think it was roughly three years back we had fallen what I'll call significantly behind in our paving program across town we were supposed to be doing 13 point something miles per year we weren't getting it done it had been clipped out of the budget a number of times the money had been sitting in capital year after year and there was a consensus among um, all town boards I believe or most of them that we should have a budget we should have an operational budget number each year for paving that was identifiable that wasn't the one-off that didn't fluctuate a ton each year and it made sense so we all kind of agreed to that but we were so far behind we had to find a plan to fix the problem and in rough numbers what what we did is we went out and we bonded somewhere north of five million dollars of paving to do over the course of three or four years to get kind of caught up on the schedule. And then we moved the paving expense from capital into the operating budget. We started at a million, but we agreed to scale it up until we got to a reasonable level that we could do the annual requirement. And that number came to about $3.5 million. So we've honored all those agreements. We've bonded the money, we've paved the roads, we've gotten caught up. And this year's budget gets us up to the 3.5 if we were to um, finish with that much money in the paving budget. So I think we're good on all of that. The answer or the question came up last Thursday about where we are this year with the with the public works budget. Now this year's budget for paving was about two was 2.5, of which they've only paved about 1.9. And you stop me when I'm wrong. And so, but there's about $600,000, and I don't know how many roads that fixes that did not get paid yet, and rightly so. Other things took precedent, storms, um, emergencies, and you couldn't, whether it was manpower or staying within your budget, you were physically unable to both pay $2.5 million worth of stuff and do everything else that came up. Perfectly understandable, Mother Nature is um, the reason for everything. So we're, we're about $600,000 behind in paving for the current year, and my understanding was not much of that will get done between now and June 30th. We're probably going to finish pretty close to that number due to the budget number that we need to get to for June 30th. So um, of that $600,000, a good chunk of it appears to be FEMA reimbursable, should we get lucky and should it qualify. Um, if that's the case, we could possibly expect to get three quarters of that money back in a perfect world, right? All the numbers add up, they all qualify, the money comes back, and everything works out. Um, my thought was this, um, that paving's not going to get done. If we, if we have $3.5 million in the budget for next year's paving, which is the right number to have in the budget. My thought was, okay, why don't we, in a perfect world, look at that $600,000 as reimbursable, 
look at three quarters of that as reimbursable, which would be $450,000. If we can find a way to dedicate those funds when and if they do come in to the paving budget, and I think finance can work out the mechanics of it with the Board of Finance transfer at some point, why couldn't we reduce the paving line for next year from 3.5 to call it 3.1, $400,000 or so, dedicate that 400000 to paving when it does come back, and then we would still be honoring our commitment of $3.5 million in paving for next year, and be able to pull $400,000 out of this budget. Uh, does that make sense? Uh, sort of, maybe. Not exactly, and, and you're, you're building it, very creative thinking, you're building that, and, and again, I thank you for, for thinking so creative, creatively, but I think there's uh, a number of, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, clarifications to make. Please. So we can get into the, the discussion. Uh, let me put uh, a motion on the floor to cut the paving budget by uh, $500,000 for next year. I'll settle with that. All right. Um, so now that we're formally discussing that. Thank you. Um, I think there, there are two things. One, um, and Mr. Michelangelo and I had a chance to sit down this morning and step through this. There are a number of things going on. One, Storm Sandy, based on how the reimbursements work, um, the DPW department is almost a profit center because we're able to charge uh, the town for the use of our own equipment and we get reimbursed 100% of straight time um, for certain tasks like debris cleanup. Consequently, what that means is a Monday through Friday payroll that we had expected to fund out of our town budget is now funded by FEMA reimbursement dollars. Uh, as well as we get to rent our equipment back for storm cleanup along those lines. So that helps us make up our 25% contribution, which helps us reduce our contribution. Unlike, I'm going to say, um, police or fire that might have some equipment reimbursement, for the most part, their overtime, all those dollars uh, are spent and we only get reimbursed at, at 75%, so we have to make up the 25% mm -hmm. balance. Right. Um, so consequently, we sat down and, and um, it's not clear that, that at the moment that we're not going to spend that $600,000 specifically out of paving this year. Um, what we are looking at uh, as we go through FEMA costs, and FEMA, like any other federal or state reimbursement program, um, at some point it's reviewed, at some point they look at eligible and ineligible costs, at some point they audit that and come back and say these things are included and these things aren't. So we want to be cautious of uh, uh, how much we take in that. and. There's actually a range that we look at, and we've been working on this since November. We've been meeting with um, Mr. Michelangelo, Mr. Mayor, and Deputy Chief Reed every week, uh, both as we accumulate costs across all our departments uh, and make sure that we're doing the calculations. This is also where we brought in a consultant uh, that we've hired to help us navigate the FEMA reimbursement waters and to make sure that we get the maximum dollar reimbursement available to the town. So for all those reasons, uh, at the moment, we're not clear that uh, we're not going to do that paving. We've just started to have those conversations, uh, and I think it's it's premature to jump to the conclusion that we won't be doing that. Um, so that's that task. Uh, Mr. Kyle, I agree with what your analysis was earlier, though, in terms of that it was four years ago. We did go out and identify that we were behind in order to catch up on our paving. We committed to do two things. One is to put paving into the operational budget for the town. Uh, that allows us, since it's annual road ma maintenance, just to pay for the paving and not pay for the bonding interest that we're also charging as a jump start to get us there and to ease the burden on the tax rate. Rather than going there all in one fell swoop, we decided to go out and bond a series of moments and let us fade, phase in the paving. At the time, uh, I voted against that proposal. And I voted against that proposal because I didn't think we we're putting enough money into the town budget initially and that we we're phasing out over time and stretching it into um, future budgets that weren't, we weren't clear on. We didn't know what things would impact us. We didn't three years ago envision Storm Sandy, Storm Nepo, Nemo, 
uh, or some of the other events we've had. Uh, and I think that's a challenge. The benefit of putting this paving in the operating budget is we have control of it. When we bond it, we can no longer change that number. When we put it in the operating budget, we have an opportunity to control that. And I think uh, attempting to ramp it up over three years, looking at the current economy, looking at our current challenges, is perhaps a bit too aggressive. Uh, and so I would suggest that uh, we reduce that by $500,000 to bring us to $3 million in paving next year, uh, but that we ramp it up over a few more years so we're not putting quite that burden on the taxpayers quite as quickly as possible. Because we did go to the extent of bonding uh, the gap money, we did catch up on uh, the dollars we're behind, and I think that when we're looking for adjustments, uh, this is one of the ones that I would propose we take a look at. Chris? I'd also like to thank Selectman Kylie for the, the thought process, and um, I think as I listen to your response, Mr. Tetro, while I hear that the, the group is meeting regularly and that it's unclear as to whether or not we won't be paving, or it's, it's unclear. In other words, it still remains an outstanding conversation. Um, I was part of the RTM at the time of the conversation um, related to bonding and then ramping up on our paving over time. And I think that we need to continue, as Selectman Kylie said, in terms of commitment. But I also recognize um, that impact on the taxpayer. Um, so if I were to support this amendment, it would be doing so, I guess, in a sense, based in part on what both of you gentlemen have said. One, the uncertainty that we don't know what's going to happen with this year's paving in the FEMA. Um, and then two, with the caveat that if this money were to be uh, reduced this year, that knowing you don't have a crystal ball, that we at least um, recognize that we need to continue to ramp up this money and that we are essentially extending the schedule or slowing the rate of change rather than just saying we're funding paving at this level. Yeah, I mean, conceptually, I look at it as the kind of same decision we made with more information back four years ago. We'd known the economy was going to be this tough. If we'd known the storms would be this serious, we wouldn't have committed to doing a million a year as part of that ramp up. We didn't know that then. A million a year didn't sound quite as bad, and we could see 12 months ahead and realize that we could fit a million in. So that's what we committed to do. We just committed more years out, I think, than we had uh, uh, a crystal ball to see. Mm -hmm. So I think that the, the concept of the three boards working together was great. I think the discussions were great. I think that um, at this point, um, I've just reached the conclusion that, that uh, we need to adjust the timing, not the commitment, but the timing. Uh, and that. Um, one of the benefits of doing this in the operating budget is we have the flexibility to do this, whereas if we were bonding it, we wouldn't have that opportunity because we can't go back and change uh, what we spent the bonded money on. And in fact, we're still paying for that bonding. Uh, and as we get to other issues on debt service, uh, as we found out, the only way to really change debt service is not to bond things. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not proposing we bond this to make up the difference. I am proposing that uh, if we have to make an adjustment that for this year, uh, we don't adjust it to zero. We don't adjust the increase to zero, but we do adjust it by $500,000. So that uh, there's still $3 million that we're putting in. And I would suggest that when you look at it from the standpoint that we bonded money ahead of time, as much as when we had $2.5 million in the fiscal 13 budget, that other million of the $3.5 million was what, part of what we bonded before. So we, in fact, put $3.5 million into our roads uh, in fiscal 13. So what we're talking about is just reducing that number by 500,000 in fiscal 14. Because we'd expect it to be 100% funded on the operation side then, we didn't bond for that number. But over the last three years, we have, between bonding and, and operational dollars, put in a 3.5 million. So over a four year period, what we're talking about is, is just not funding $500,000. Thank you. And thank you for the explanations from both of you folks. And there is certainly a number of reasonable approaches we can take on this. 
and I certainly support reducing our budget by five hundred thousand dollars. I mean, uh, that's the ultimate goal here is to save some money for our taxpayers, yet still allow these guys to do their jobs and make the roads, um, you know, safe. And the roads are in pretty rough shape. We've had a we've had a rough year, and you guys, you know, have been busy with other things, and we want to make sure that the roads are continued to be maintained and upgraded as needed. I guess um, I understand exactly what you have said, and I appreciate your comments. My question back to Mr. Michelangelo would be, I believe if I heard it correctly last Thursday, maybe you've got newer information, that the $600,000 of paving for the current year would not get done between now and June 30th. Now, if that's been changed, then it might alter my view on how I look at the global commitment that we're making here. But my thinking there was, if if we weren't going to use the $600,000 for paving between now and June 30th, and we reduced you by a half a million bucks, then you're down a grand total of 1.1 million over two years, and I don't know whether that was the sustainable model that we were looking for on a paving program. So if you could just quickly opine on that. Of the $600,000 that has not been spent in this year's operating budget for paving, how much of that do you expect to reasonably get done between now and June 30th? Because I thought you said zero last week. Okay, uh, there is $618,000 remaining in that original $2.5 million appropriation. Right. And some of the stuff that the storms have done to us, so just on the public works operating operations side, mm -hmm. uh, Storm Sandy cost us about 1.95 million direct impact to our budget. Right. When we go through the FEMA process, as First Selectman said, Public Works itself gets most of that back. So if we tribute every dollar from FEMA that comes in directly to the operations budget, we'll be pretty close to a wash on the Public Works side. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we pro from the town side, we probably won't be able to to allocate that money department by department because the fire department would be, you know, several hundred thousand dollars over their limit. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure there's a balance to how much is going to be restored to public works. I don't expect that every dollar will be there. So, so that's one thing we have to figure. Mm -hmm. Also, Nemo, because there was a 48 hour period, is a much bigger impact on our uh, operations budget. So in round numbers, we spent about 425, mm -hmm. and we're only going to get about half of that back. So there'll be a $200,000 direct impact, no matter how you slice it, to the public work operations budget. So to balance out my budget, at the best case, even if the Sandy money doesn't all come to me, it's a minimum of several hundred thousand that I have to account for. And out of the $15 million budget, there are only so many line items that you could uh, unspend on. So we intend to reduce every line item we could possibly find mm -hmm. by a certain amount, but to get to a several hundred thousand dollar level, the paving account uh, may ultimately be the, the one that's decided. Once again, I'll, I'll work with the board on that decision, right. but as far as how much that's reduced a lot of that depends on how much of the Sandy money gets allocated, but it's, uh, yeah, I, I don't think I can tell you right now whether we'll be able to spend, you know, out of that 618, whether we'll be able to spend, you know, a quarter or half of that. I can't tell you that right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, but, you know, the paving in Connecticut starts up fairly soon. So from a timing perspective, yeah, we physically would be able to pave, you know, in May, in June, before June 30th. But once again, the budget constraints are what we have to figure. Right, and I think you just answered my question. And my question was, you know, we don't know these government reimbursements take time, and they're complicated, and they pit your budget from a number of different directions, and, you know, you understand all that better than I do, and you guys have talked more so than I have. Um, but it, it kind of sounds to me still, based on your comments, that it appears to be more unlikely than it is likely, all those things considered, that you have room in your budget and time in the last quarter of the year to do a ton of paving 
against that balance of $618,000. That's the operating line for paving for the current year. Um, as, as far as I'm like not I, trying to lead yeah. the witness, but it seems like it's a reasonable, yeah. It's yeah, actually, a reasonable yeah. conclusion. Yeah. But if I might expand on that, the, the issue is, and to be fair to Joe, the issue is, A, how much you do, and B, what purchase orders you put out that, that basically get it accrued in this year. Okay. And I think we're looking at the balance of both of those. Right. Uh, practically speaking, Joe's doing an admirable job of trying to make sure he stays within his budget for his department. Exactly. But this is also right. one of the cases when we do have some contingency dollars that can also be applied to this, as well as some issues in other uh, mm -hmm. departments. So it reaches beyond just where Absolutely. Joe's view in DPW. That's why right. uh, Joe and, and uh, our CFO, as well as myself, are involved in kind of plotting that out for the rest of the quarter. That's why it, it, we've been accumulating NEMO dollars for Storm Sandy, and that's been kind of our ongoing budget review and evaluation process to make sure that uh, we have that. So. Mm -hmm. Structurally, no, I'm not ready to commit that we're not going to do 600 grand worth of paving at this point. Right. We've got a lot more discussion to do on that. Right. Uh, we will come in as if we weren't talking about fiscal 2014 at all, mm -hmm. forget the budget. Right. We'll still be sitting down and saying, what do we have to do for this year? How do we come in under budget? How do we right. step through this? So that we're in the process of doing right now. <coughs> we have not reached the conclusion that we're not going to do this paving. We have not reached the conclusion that we're not going to spend the $600,000 this year or need uh, to not spend the 600000 this year. Okay, I can, I can understand that. So here are my goals. My goals are for you folks to discuss and figure all that stuff out because you guys meet every day and you, and you have that ability to do so. My other goal is to make sure that the road improvements continue as, as best as they can be going along, all things considered. Uh, my other goal is to make sure that you guys are able to stay within your budget this year. Um, as best you possibly can, all things considered. And my other goal is to, I'm, I'm more than happy to reduce next year's paving line by half a million dollars, which was pretty much my original intent. But my, my bigger picture goal, which I think benefits your department and overall means is make sure that you don't get double hit. Make sure that you don't lose the full benefit of the $618,000 in the current year or some large chunk of it that you might not be able to either get reimbursed in time or get the work done in time and get clipped over here for a half a million dollars. I, I would rather see there be some middle ground where it's a half a million dollars in grand total. It's kind of a pushing of the whole pro program out versus losing $1.1 million. So that was the point I was trying to make. And just to uh, clarify again, to take away one of the variables to make it a little more comfortable, we don't need to get reimbursed within the next 90 days because uh, we basically can book that so it doesn't hit the budget. So these, we're not relying on the federal government to write us a check quickly. That's good news. Right? It's a cash flow issue. We can survive the cash flow. Right. Uh, FEMA is traditionally slow, and we've been planning right. Uh, right from the start, going back to last October, November, that you know FEMA traditionally takes a year to get the money back. Right. That's one of the. Um, that's what we experienced during Irene. Uh, yeah, they haven't taken two years, but they are not quick pay in that regard. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, we need to go back and do that. And there, from an accounting standpoint, I'm going to say we book a receivable. I'll stand to be corrected by Mr. Mayor if there's a more technical <laughs> term for that. Sounds good to me. But, but basically, <laughs> we can record the fact that the, the money's been approved. We're going to get it. We just haven't got it yet. So that's kind of uh, what we're looking at for next one. I'm good. Kristen? So as I listen to both of you, and by, by the way, I'd just like to uh, say that I like the goals that Selectman Kiley oh, has put forward. Um, and I'm concerned about the double hit, and um, I'm going to float an idea as I'm literally just, just come to me during this conversation. So I'm a little bit concerned about the half million dollar level of cut because of the, the uncertainty in terms of what we do or don't know that we can accomplish this year. So I'm wondering if, um, as an alternative to cutting the 500 in total, that we look at cutting it at a 350 level, which, and then taking 150 and moving it into contingency in the event that, uh, depending on how things end up turning out, that money, that 150 could remain as potentially used for paving. Um, and if not, that then goes into contingency as an, as an option. So it's just a thought. It's, trying to recognize that there's uncertainty here and yet not sure I'm 
comfortable with that level of cut. The, if I understand you correctly, your proposal, we don't spend the 500000 on paving, partially because we cut 350 of it, and in essence, put the other 150 in contingency. We'd still have to raise the tax rate to account for that. So rather than it being a $500,000 cut, at this, the amendment would be to cut this budget by 350 rather than 500, and then to move the 150 into contingency. Why not okay. just leave it in payday? It's that sense of uncertainty in terms of the FEMA and what's happening. I'm trying to balance out FEMA, both the approaches. FEMA doesn't have anything to do with fiscal 14. I think I'm trying to get to Mr. Kiley's thought about the cumulative hit. So I understand that. Again, just a creative thought. Um, and we could just leave it in there and do a 350 cut rather than 500. I just, because there are so many uncertainties with this, I'm just looking for a little bit less of a hit potentially. I guess it, it the, um, the level of uncertainty one is just fiscal 13, just this year. Um, assuming not, not assuming any storms in fiscal 14, certainly. Um, and part of what we're doing, independent of the budget process, is working with uh, Mr. Michelangelo, uh, Mr. Mayor, and myself, going back through making sure that we do everything we can and need to uh, to finish this year uh, in the black. And that's going to happen independent of anything with fiscal 14 or any current um, FEMA issues, because any of the FEMA reimbursements are all based on what's already transpired uh, and what we're currently applying for and the storms that we currently have. So that's, in essence, already in process and underway. And it's the type of thing we deal with uh, with snowstorms that we have when they're declared a FEMA event. Um, with hurricanes that we have when they reach that level. So um, I think the issue there, um, or as I see it, it would make more sense, uh, perhaps, to look at uh, next year's budget and say, if our contingency isn't fully used in next year's budget, can we then turn around and provide some additional payment in that um, so we can uh, top of the three million for next year, uh, if this amendment were approved, we could maybe increase that up to three million to fifty uh, at some point during the year when we know that we've achieved that savings and can free up those dollars. Which would keep the tax rate low, but then also target one of our objectives is defining two fifty to put into that so that we can get some additional paving done next year. So the worst I'd rather than putting it in, take it out of contention next year if we see that we uh, get through that. I'm good with the five. Any further discussion? No. Ready to vote? Yeah. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, to reduce the paving light item in the DPW operations budget by $500,000. It leaves uh, $3 million in the paving budget for fiscal 14. Right. Any other discussion on the public works operations budget? Oh, yes. Sorry, I had to get back. Just on the capital requests, I wanted to talk about quickly the, the, the two brush buckets for $36,500. And we, we had a discussion last Thursday that we might be able to get away with just buying one of them this year and one the second year, so we could pull 18250 out of that capital request line. Is that a motion? It is. There are second. Second. Okay. Um, Unless my notes are wrong, that's kind of what I came away with last Thursday. Okay. Right. Any further discussion? Yeah. Kristen? No. We ready to vote on that? Mm -hmm. yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. 
And Mr. Mike, Linda, you got that? Very good. <clears throat> Any further discussion on public works operations? No. Uh, next up, building department. Any discussion on building department? Yeah, just can I just get you, if, if I may, may, Mr. Tetra, can I just get your thoughts on the new secretary? It's just so tough this year, so tight this year. Um, I'm just uneasy with, um, you know, new hires, even though I know we're offsetting 40% of this with a with a part-time transfer. So can you just, can you, just, can you get me comfortable with that? Do my best. I think the, and again, I'm going to go back to the term you used earlier, which is balance. Mm -hmm. um, all things being equal, we would be adding headcount. I think there, there are two things that, that in this case, um, look at headcount. From, from this standpoint, it is looking at, at um, increasing the staff. There are two issues here, I think, operationally. One is historically, the building department took on the workload a few years ago of light officer and light prevention. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things we uh, beat the state up all the time about is unfunded mandates, asking us to do something and not giving us any additional funds or resources to do it. Uh, when, we, when the RTM created the blight ordinance, we looked to the building officer to also be the blight officer. We, in essence, created our own unfunded mandate by saying, here's some additional work, please do it. Um, one of the, uh, I won't say most frequent, but one of the common calls I get is about different properties that um, different residents around town think are blight, blighted or need to be addressed. Uh, a number of members of elected boards and bodies have been people making those calls to follow up on behalf of their constituents mm -hmm. to say, what can we do? How do we get to it? Where it is? What's an update? How do we stand? How come you didn't get back to me? And all those take time, and especially the further out you go. Uh, I mean, Mr. Gillern's done a yeoman's job of making sure that uh, he finds out more about the residents, their ability to pay, where they are, what it takes to get it done. He's been waiting for two years for a modification to the blight ordinance uh, to allow for us to um, retain some funds to give him some money to fix up some of the worst offenders for those property owners that are perhaps really struggling, some of our, our um, residents. One of the things we've made a commitment to do there and have recent, recently collected a $38,000 fine uh, is to let the folks that uh, own, own property owners know that if they live in a blighted property and they don't take care of it, uh, we will find them and we will collect our fines. Um, so we're trying to take a harder line there than in the past. So that's one issue in terms of the whole blight function in town. Okay. The second issue uh, is looking at the workload uh, in the near term, starting um, a couple months ago uh, with Storm Sandy and the amount of construction work that's being happened in the beach area. Uh, our building department did go through and boot or disconnect with UI's help 750 meters, uh, electric meters in the beach area and get uh, over 700 back and reconnected already. So they did a phenomenal amount of overtime work to get all that done on a very timely basis. Now we get the more complicated task of building permits, reviewing plans, getting houses rebuilt, getting houses raised, uh, reviewing in some cases the engineering work involved in that, uh, and managing that whole process. So to be fair to our residents who are now looking to get this done on a timely basis because they're not building a home that they hope to move into someday. They're trying to rebuild a house that they are currently not able to live in and haven't been able to live in since October 29th. So I think I'm very concerned about the service levels and our response and a lot of it's paperwork. Um, now we did have uh, uh, one inspector out on uh, long-term medical leave um, that person has since left town employed. We have a, a, a new person on board. So we, in essence, increased our staff of inspectors without increasing the headcount because we had somebody on payroll at that point. Um, but we also are looking to improve the paperwork processing on this side. Uh, we have one uh, administ administrative uh, assistant in that office, one secretary.
currently, when she's not in the office, the paperwork has been stacking up and getting us literally a week behind if she's gone for a week. So that's the concern, and okay. Mr. Gillerin has spoken very passionately about this. For two years, we'd actually uh, looked at putting this in the budget last year. Uh, right. We had moved it to contingency to allow us to work that as we needed to, and, and mm -hmm. um, it got lost uh, when the contingency cut was made uh, at the last step in our approval process. Okay. So I think that it's something that isn't um, uh, Mr. Gillard has been trying to approach us for his department. He's worked with planning and zoning to minimize the financial impact, though it is a headcount increase. I don't mean to suggest that, but to minimize the financial impact in terms of how they share staff. And uh, I thought that was very creative on both department heads uh, in terms of working together to minimize the financial impact on the town and yet improve service levels and response in both departments. So that's, uh, no. I guess, a long way of... of Getting no, thank you very much for that explanation, and um, I certainly appreciate it. Follow-up questions. The blight fines, just to clarify, they do go into the general fund. Is that correct? At the moment, they do. Okay. And again, historically, I don't know if we've been as aggressive in collecting those. That certainly has been the approach recently. I've sat down and talked with Mr. Geller and let him know that, that uh, if anybody is not responsive, that we will uh, both implement the finding process and collect on those fines. But if I may follow up, and I appreciate that, um, and but it will take people power to do that. So I do, I do support the the change. Though I respect again Selectman Kylie's question, and yes, it, it's tough in terms of headcount this year. But I think this is a needed and important addition for an area that we are adding 200,000 in anticipated revenue as well, which means an increased workload. Thank you. All right, next up, engineering. All right, then moving on. Uh, next up, health. Any discussion on the health department? Okay, next up, uh, Human and Social Services. Any discussion on this department? Ms. McCarthy-Jacob. Thank you, Mr. Tetro. Uh, I make a motion to reduce this budget by one position with the new director of the Senior Center for $68,837, along with the corresponding health and Social Security benefits, and I'm hoping that Ms. Gardner can help with those calculations. Yep. Is there a second? I'll second that. Talk about it. May I follow up? Please. Uh, yes. Please. Um, my motion for this item is not because I do not think that uh, our senior center deserves to have a director. It is in large part due to the fact that we have a new Director of Human and Social Services who has just come on board. And um, it is my hope that she can do um, along with others, and I would love to support that and assist with that. Uh, and in conjunction with those who are at the Senior Center, a thorough review of the department and what they are all capable of doing there. And um, she brings a fresh perspective and experience and I would like to see how that develops and goes forward for the year before we commit to this new position. And again, it goes back to the first selectman's comments before about service level review. This is perhaps one example, um, and hopefully this can be done across all departments as we look at uh, who does what, why, and how. Any other discussion? Yeah, may I? Maybe, um, Mr. Tetro, since there's been a number of changes here, I know we have one new hire and another one proposed and then some new part-time hours. Can you just take a moment and just remind us what's going on here? You know, what's happening, what's happening, what's, just so I can get a kind of lay of the land with the headcount and, right. and all that. In the, in the Human and Social Services Department, we had a director retire. Mm-hmm. 
and we have hired a replacement. At the that's, moment, that's. I just want to make sure I've got the right people in the right places. That's this one right here, right? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm writing a new book. Right there. Oh, got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, as you can see from the, the layout, um, we really only have um, one other full-time person in that uh, human and social services area. Mm -hmm. uh, the seniors uh, put together a committee it's called the Top Ten Committee that reported to, to our board uh, and the board of finance and proposed that we bring on uh, somebody to be a senior center director to uh, help improve the services mm -hmm. to our seniors and frankly to get um, more effective use out of one of our um, assets in town called the senior center and what can we do to get more seniors in there what we can do to extend the hours and get it working uh, in more direction and uh, they had gone out had visited a number and surveyed a number of uh, senior centers in the area, as well as conducted a survey of seniors themselves, gotten that feedback in terms of what programs, what hours, what offerings we should have by our for our seniors. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the, the senior center person. There is also a, a part-time mm -hmm. person that's, that's brought in on this. Uh, the seniors, uh, prior senior center director had worked to get a computer system donated called myseniorcenter.com that right. would let us register seniors, track who they are, track what service they use, uh, and let us stay in touch with our seniors better, but also uh, have better knowledge, information, and intelligence about what they're using, what they need, how it works. This is a software package that uh, is used by another, a number of other senior centers in the area. Mm -hmm. The part-time clerk would actually fill in in the afternoons and help man the door to make sure people come in and actually check in so we have that knowledge. With, without that position, we have a computer system that people may use or may not use, and, and we really would just like the benefit. And again, that would keep us, I think, from making the right long-term investments in our seniors and dollars in terms of what programs we need to offer, how we do those, where we spend our time, how we expand the use of mm -hmm. this resource. Good. Thank you very much. Just a couple, a couple comments. Um, you know, this is a very difficult year and people are concerned about spending and hiring and all that. Um, but, you know, this budget um, is addressing a couple issues that are very important to me as they pertain to senior citizens. We recently passed um, senior citizen tax relief that's adding um, seven or eight hundred thousand dollars to this budget is critically important to keep people in their homes in our town, uh, productive and active members of our community. And that's that's a wonderful thing. And, you know, I've been part of that program or a proponent of that program, working on it many times over many years, and I'm very pleased that that is in here. And this budget is also addressing our senior center, which um, by most people's accounts, I don't go there that often, um, is in need of a changeover. Better programs to serve more people, um, increased offerings to our senior citizens, um, the ability to communicate with our seniors to let them know what they do, um, what offerings and what programs we have there so that we can increase participation and, and, and in general make the lives of our senior citizens who live in our town, many of them on fixed incomes, um, more viable, more productive and more affordable. So even though these are um, a couple what I'll call minor additions to our budget for this year, and this is a very difficult year, I am inclined to leave these items in the budget and support them because I think the senior center needs this assistance. I think it's long overdue. And I think the seniors in our town deserve to have a center that is, you know, I, 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 I'm not sure what the right word is, larger or more robust, but certainly uh, provide the services that other towns are providing to their seniors. So um, in a difficult budget year, I see this as important and I see this as an investment and a priority. So. I, I cannot support a motion to reduce. I am absolutely with Selectman Kiley in terms of the need for us to support our seniors and this budget, which is human and social services, which is our seniors and all our human service needs. And we haven't put um, 
the kind of funding into this budget, certainly that we have in other budgets. Um, I just want to be clear that, first of all, the work that was done by the Senior Center Committee, um, they did a phenomenal job. And I'm not suggesting that I or any others would um, duplicate or overlook in any way that work. I think it's critical. I also want to note that whatever Whatever the budget situation or the economic situation, I would be suggesting this either way, um, that this suggestion is not made. This is one of my suggestions that is not made because of the fact that this is a tough budget year. It's simply from a practical standpoint that we have a new department head um, and that I do believe that it makes sense for us to look at that from a fresh perspective, having someone having had the perspective of those who are on the outside give some wonderful and important feedback and now also having that perspective of someone working from the inside. So while I, I and I absolutely believe that this is an area that we are going to need to invest in in the future. Back to what I said earlier about the, the service level review needs to be done in part with what we need to continue to look at in the future. So this is not something that I say no we should never have. It's just, let's take the time to um, hear from that department head and new perspective. But I do, I very much agree with Selectman Kylie in terms of supporting our seniors and making full use of what we have as a wonderful asset at the Senior Center. Thank you. All right. um, if I might, kind of as, as perhaps uh, listening to both of you and, and uh, I think we're all supportive of the senior center. I think we're all supportive of the seniors. I think that uh, we're all looking for a way to do more with less, if you will. Uh, and maybe one of the ways to get there is to take a look at this and uh, borrowing from one of the, the suggested approaches in the past is to uh, uh, cut this in half and basically say, let's look at doing it, but let's look at doing it uh, six months into the year. Um, which would allow us to both reduce the expenses, give the new senior center director time to get up, get things organized, uh, and then possibly um, bring it on at that point. We'll kind of like phase it in halfway through the year, is that what you're saying? No. Well, that sounds like it might be a reasonable approach. And I very much appreciate that um, effort to compromise. I think part of why I propose this is looking at staffing structuring. and. I am not an expert there, uh, clearly I'm not working within the department, but it's perhaps allowing that director to look at the overall staffing, um, which is why I, I, again, I'm not saying that we should not have a director of our senior services, that's, that's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying that we should have a conversation um, and allow for the full view of the department. So I, I'm torn a bit about that compromise. Um, I might be more inclined to um, look, well, yeah, I'm torn. That's, I'll just leave it at that. Um, we have a motion before us on the table to eliminate the position or uh, as eliminate the senior center director salary benefits, correct? Correct. Yeah. Um, do we want to amend that motion or do you want to vote on it? Vote on it. Well, may, again, I, may I make another comment? The, rather than cut this, then perhaps an option is to, and I'm going to use the contingency idea again, which allows for the kind of review and conversation and then allows that conversation to come back potentially here and to the Board of Finance in terms of making a decision on a movement. So rather than necessarily cutting, perhaps we could look at the half and... Um, all right, and then maybe maybe the, the issue there is to um, eliminate the cost here and then kind of to combine both those points. Uh, if this board... Uh, makes a commitment to come back and review this at the first of the year. And assuming we have contingency dollars available, 
uh, that we've missed, storm, whatever the next one will be, uh, that we take a look at uh, our initiative through the various boards to put this vision. And then we'll know what the uh, new director of human and social services has been able to accomplish, let her solidify, make sure she's comfortable with our moving forward on this, and yet still be able to address the needs of our seniors by bringing this in and starting in the, the second half of the year and kind of running it through um, the other boards and, at, at that point. So the cutting it here means we're not increasing the taxes, looking at contingency you know, based on partway through the year, based on uh, if we've had a good enough experience that we could look at bringing this on sooner, uh, as opposed to possibly revisiting it in next year's budget. Okay, so, so what would the motion be? Well, the simple motion would be just to vote um, yes on Ms. McCarthy Fahey's motion to cut it. Okay. Doing that with the understanding that we're going to come back and revisit this in December, January, see where we are talk mm -hmm. to the human services director, see if that's the timing is right to bring this on and if we have the money available to do that within the current tax increase. Okay. So that, that we don't say, we're not, we're kind of saying no for now, but not um, no entirely, and uh, look at potentially bringing it on before next year's budget if we can. I'm going to vote, I'm going to vote against that. And may I, oops, sorry. Okay. My, That's okay. my thought would be if, if we were to do it, that we would move that half money into contingency so that if that way there's actually designated money in there that would allow for that to occur. In other words, it's taking Selectman Kiley's suggestion to, well, forgive me, I'm losing track of who suggested what, but mm -hmm. taking the suggestion, I believe it was you, Selectman Kiley, am I right about the perhaps, well, perhaps halfway through the year. Um, so rather than cutting it entirely, we would move half into contingency, commit to having that conversation at the, at the table here, as you said, um, and knowing that it's in contingency and if there is a storm, then we may not be able to have the same kind of conversation. But does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm, it's helpful, it's getting me there. Um, Rather than put the money in contingency and have that decision be subject to what's left in contingency six or eight months from now that we don't know what's going on, I'd rather leave half of I'll, I'll meet you halfway, but I would rather leave half of it in here so that the vote of this board reflects the commitment to make the hire at some point, even if it's phased in or halfway through the year, versus saying no, at least formally, and putting money in contingency that's potentially subject to not being there for a variety of reasons, whether it's a subsequent board's vote or mother nature. Because mm -hmm. it's, I mean, I, I'm okay meeting you halfway on the timing of it, but I'm not necessarily willing to meet halfway on the commitment to it. I hear you. I understand that. Okay, so I would vote for that, but I wouldn't vote for, I, I would vote against the original motion or putting half of it in contingency, but I would vote for putting half of it, leaving half of it here, if that makes sense. It does make sense, and I understand. I think we, I think we have, in the end, the same hope and goal that just may be coming at it differently. I think so. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's at least my sense, because I think what you want to make sure is that there is someone who is there to provide the level of service that we need and, and be committed to the seniors and to developing the senior center. I want to see that too. Right. I just, I have a slight, a slightly different idea about how to get there. Right. That's and if the money's going to be the same in the end when we leave this room, which it would be under either leaving the money in here or putting half of it in contingency, if I'm going to leave the half of the money in the budget, I'd like to leave all of the commitment in there versus leaving it open to so much, you know, uncertainty. Right. Okay. I that, hear you. That's where I am. And if I could add kind of one other component to this discussion that the uh, new director we brought on board is director of human and social services. So not only looking after the senior center directly, but also so social services component. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things we've seen take a, um, a hit for increased need, mm -hmm. both with the economy, but also most recently with Storm Sandy. 
and that a lot of the residents in our beach area were seniors. A lot of the residents in our beach area were living on fixed incomes and, and have yeah. uh, definite needs. So we've seen a, a workload go up uh, from that standpoint. Uh, and we're seeing that, that again, um, our residents uh, have some needs. And, and again, it's, it's always those that have are the most vulnerable uh, that need our help in this time. And it's, sometimes hard for them to find other places to reach out to. So to the extent that um, we can look at this and, and do this as a um, half a cut, if you will, to a, uh, as opposed to a full cut and allow for that, um, both those functions to take place, both the senior center, but as well as improve social uh, services, uh, service levels, that would be great. So I'm, to that end, I am willing to uh, change my motion and again, need help from the uh, Ms. Gardner? finance department over in. The What's your motion? The intent would be to have the position begin in January. We, we need to cut half the senior center director. Okay. Got it. You want to know the number approximately? It's about 44, 46,991. Can you please repeat that? That's the salary. Forty-six nine nine one. That's the salary plus benefits. And Correct. Right. Are we ready to? Is there a second? Did you amend your motion? I did. Uh, I think you seconded. Did you second originally? Did I second? I think you did. I think you did. Jen, you seconded that motion. Did I? Okay. okay, so I should. You should second the amendment? I'll second this one, yes. Okay, I'm with you. Yep. Okay, so it's the amended motion that is before us. We need to vote to amend the motion. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to vote now just to amend the motion. So if, okay. if this vote's successful, what will be in front of us is the amended motion. Okay. All in favor of the amendment to the motion? Aye. Aye. So what's before us now is the amended motion mm -hmm. to reduce the additional um, the senior center director by half with the intent that that position would start halfway through the year. Uh, any further discussion on that? Mm -hmm. We're ready to vote. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, Ms. Gardner, you have that? Good. Thank you. Any further um, discussions on the human and social services budget? No. Next up, uh, solid waste and recycling. Uh, we did make some adjustments to this, mm -hmm. um, both initially in the first selectman's recommendation and then again in our package of line item adjustments at the front of this meeting. Any further discussion or adjustments on the solid waste budget? Yeah. Next up, the library. Uh, any discussion on the library budget? Just a quick question, please. Can you just, there was, again, a late and lengthy conversation about the library last week, and I'm not sure if my notes are clear on where we are in the hiring process. I think there's at least one or two open positions, and I don't know what effect they might have on next year's budget, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about this year. And um, really, that's it. Okay. Just so I can understand the way of the land. There are currently two positions vacant. One is, is what I call an in-process hire. There's been somebody left, that person was replaced, that created an opening, that person was replaced, that created an opening, that person was replaced. So we're kind of in that chain of Okay. That's commonly referred to as churn. And that's the library associate spot? Uh, that's my understanding, yes. Yeah, that's like, okay. And so then the. Uh, so that's ongoing. Yep. There's okay. A position, and I believe it's a reference librarian, one of the reference librarian positions mm -hmm. that uh, I have asked to keep open and have throughout this year as part of the kind of ongoing balancing of <laughs> the financial needs of the budget. Okay. So those are the two. Okay. 
Thank you very much for the explanation. Okay. Um, I mean, the budget's pretty lean from last year. My, my, my only comment is they've done a very good job at explaining to us what they're doing. The uh, uh, department had um, Ronald came before us last Thursday and helped us understand a few more things on the budget, which was very helpful. And whether it's headcount or whether it's part-time hours or whether it's massaging lines within the budget, um, I think the ultimate goal that we came away with was making sure that we could get the hours open back up to the library. So however we accomplish that is, is fantastic in my eyes, as long as we can get that done. So. Right. Yeah. Yes, as a follow-up, I, I think we did have some conversation last week and yeah. there were a few different pieces to it, both with respect to this year as well as next year. Um, I think that I'm not going to, at this point in time, propose any amendments to this budget. However, I recognize that and thank um, Karen Ronald for noting to us that she would be willing to take a material budget cut if it meant that there was a way for the library to remain open. And right. so um, I would ask that the first selectman have a conversation with her and see if, if as this moves forward to the Board of Finance and the RTM, um, that can be accomplished. So again, I agree with yeah. selectman Kylie yeah. that we we will, I think we all agree. We want to see the, the library hours restored if that's in any way possible. And it sounds like there, there may be a way. Obviously, we have to wait and see what happens with the other boards. But right. just put that out for your no. consideration. Thank you for those comments. I, I, I agree with 100%. Yeah, I think that's, uh, in this case, uh, really a function of what happens as this moves through the um, budget process here. And certainly, uh, <coughs> If there's any way to do it, the sooner we can restore those hours, the better. Thank you for that. All right, moving on. Uh, Penfield Pavilion, there have been a number of adjustments there mm -hmm. that came through as part of that package yep. of, uh, okay. we discussed earlier. Right. Uh, Parks and Rec, again, a number of adjustments that came through as part of our package earlier. Mm -hmm. Waterfront, same comment. Mm -hmm. Carl Dickman Golf Course, same comment. <laughs> Smith Richardson Golf Course. Okay. Any discussion? Yes, let me get caught up here. No, the capital's also, right. Okay. Board of Education we discussed earlier. We did. Uh, retiree benefits, any discussion? Uh, just a comment. I appreciated the first selectman's remarks as well as selectman Kylie uh, about our commitment and I'm very glad that we have as a practice been funding our obligations. Um, I think we get ourselves into trouble when we don't do so. So okay. thank you for highlighting that. Yeah, I think I think it's one of those things that because we decided it was the right thing to do and, and Mr. Carly, I remember we were on the Board of Finance, we had extensive conversations. Yeah, many times. Doing the right thing yeah. in the long term. Uh, we kind of assume other towns are doing the same thing. And, and then when we look around, we find out, no, their, their pensions are not fully funded. No, they're not making progress towards their retiree medical benefits or OPEP payments the way we are in town. And that's, on one hand, I'm going to suggest that that's a, certainly a, a burden um, from a tax rate standpoint for our current residents. Uh, but it recognizes we have an obligation to future residents to make sure that, that we're not leaving them uh, with part of our tax burden, that we're making the right choices for today and for tomorrow, that we're not kicking the can down the road. Um, and we just see time and again in the news, one story after another about communities or states that did not make the right choice, that did not fund their long-term obligations. And now we're looking around and saying, how do I pay for it? Uh, I think there was an old Aesop's fable uh, about an ant and a grass key, grasshopper in terms of who was playing and, and who was planning for the future. And I think that Fairfield has done the right thing. Uh, and not just this, our group, of Fairfielders, but uh, prior groups of residents that have made sure that uh, 
we have planned properly for the future. I think this is one of the places it shows up. Uh, debt service. Is this the current number? This is the current number, and I think, and Ms. Gardner, we have some adjustments. We had an adjustment to debt service, so that's going to take this number down a bit, I believe, by oh, 500000 yeah. You took that already, yes. Right. Correct. No other that means the number in the book is $500,000 overstated. Right. Just quickly. Um, typically, you know, since you guys put the book together in October, by the time we get to April, there's always some minor tweaking along the way of debt service. There aren't any other minor adjustments, good or bad? None. We're good? Okay. Thanks. All right, that's it for the town side. We're now moving on to WPCA. May I? I, I do have ahead. one other oh, recommended adjustment for the town side, and it actually goes across a number of departments with respect to the department health head health care cost share. <coughs> and I, again, am going to need some help and support from the finance department folks on this. Um, my proposal would be that we move the budget to be in line with the um, proposed mid-manager's contract so that, and perhaps Mr. Mayor, you can provide some clarification on numbers for me since I don't have them. Well, and I think Mr. Tetra. It, it might be safer to categorize it as, as move it in line with the uh, most recently passed contracts. That, um, so we're not talking about any well, futures. Well put. Um, but what we're trying to uh, Basically, in recognition of both the economy and, and the increase in healthcare costs, and uh, in looking at recent contract settlements, certainly our employees have uh, recognized that fact uh, and have moved from a fixed dollar amount to a percentage contribution amount, and that percentage of contribution amount being larger, um, a larger component of sharing the healthcare costs. So, um, again, we are seeing that in our agreements, it's having a one of the ways that we can reduce our the growth in our health care number. Um, so with that as a setup, I'll turn it back over to you. So I, I think you put that very well, Mr. First Lesson. So I'll <laughs> I'll defer to Mr. Mayor who is yeah, the, the number is twenty four thousand six hundred and nineteen dollars. Okay, and so that recognizes a what percent share I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're saying. Uh, in order to get that number, you had to take a percentage of our health care Eleven percent. On the blended rate. That's a contribution. Okay. Times the number, number of employees. Um, is there a second on my motion? Can we? You want to clarify your motion? Yeah, well, I don't my, understand. my, my intent was for it to match. I believe I believe it was a 12 percent actually. Um, and if 11 percent, if I'm wrong on my numbers, again I will look to you for for that to be in line with what's been coming. That's that's the number. That's okay. a 12 percent number. 11 percent. Right. Or what's the 12 percent number? Well, if you want to get a 12 percent number, you increase it by 9 percent. Multiply two four and six one nine times one decimal zero nine. And you get two six eight three five. The two six eight three five. And so I'll I would move that we reduce the budget by two six eight three five across the department yeah, right. that, it, was my, it was my understanding the reason I gave you the original number was you wanted what the reason PETA agreement was. So the 24619 yeah. is yeah. the reason. Mr. Mr. Mayor, yeah. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't have a recent PETA agreement. Well, that's so if we could not but anyway, discuss that, that, that would be helpful. But, uh, so, anyway, so anyway, that was the request that was the information provided and so this is but the new number would be that 
26, 8, whatever he said. 8, 3, 4. How about this? How about if I make the motion for $25,000? Is that, is that okay? <laughs> we can, and my intent here, first of all, is I'll go back. May I discuss this? I don't, sure. I don't know if we have a second and if it's, if it's discussable without the second for this is part of my motion. Uh, I'll second for discussion. Okay, thank you. Um, what I said earlier in the meeting holds here as well. Um, we have amazing department heads in our town who do yeoman's work and go above and beyond. Um, so this is not a statement about that. It's just a recognition of our reality. Um, I, I have, again, not and clearly not have um, in-depth conversation with the exact numbers with the finance department, but my intent was for it to be more in line with the recent contracts, and I'm willing to make the motion that, that in-between number so that the details on that can be figured out going forward as we discuss some of the broader departments. Uh, anyway, the number I gave you would be inconsistent with PTE, um, FIDA, and uh, police recent contracts. The 24-619? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Then I'm good with that. So my motion would be for 24-619 from the departments to be determined by the finance department. Which will be taken by line item by department. Correct. I just want to clarify for myself. So is the intent of the motion for there to be an adjustment from for the department heads only, that select group, for their health insurance contributions to be married up to this percentage that I'm hearing? And yes. that's the difference between what they currently pay and what they would be paying under that number or plan? Yes, but I'm not okay. sure about the number of people involved, actually. Okay. I, I just didn't understand it. Thank you. All right, any further discussion? Are we ready to vote? Mm -hmm. That the, um, the motion for us is that the department head Uh, the Depar department head health insurance line, health self insurance line, uh, be adjusted by twenty five thousand dollars. Twenty four six nineteen. Twenty four six nineteen to allow for a uh, change in premium cost share. An increase in premium cost share. Right. That's a good question. Um, since we're dealing with the townwide group of department heads and what their contributions on health care would be, would it make sense, without complicating it, to move it over to contingency where we moved over the $50,000 with the salary increases? So those decisions and all those things are in one bucket to be analyzed versus I, I'm, I'm just I'm thinking out loud, doesn't it? Yes, I'm absolutely we, We've already made one global decision to move that there, the raises or the increases. Does it make sense to move this there and kind of do a joint analysis of it? Or, or does that make it more complicated? It would depend on your objective. If your objective is to, you know, move it there so it can be reviewed subsequent, that would be fine. Okay. If your objective, uh, and I thought what uh, Kristen was saying is her objective was to have an impact the tax increase in this budget, then we'd actually have to cut it. Um, oh, coming back to the gotcha. review yep. of the, the Department yep. of Benefits, okay. we had planned to do that by the end of this year. Most of those either don't have a material impact on the current year budget, um, but this one would mm -hmm. to some degree. And so the issue is, do we make if we don't make that adjustment now, 
we can't impact the, the tax rate. Gotcha. Yep, makes sense. And if did I that, may, I and that? no, I think you did say that very well, though I think Selectman Kylie raises a good point because it allows, it, you're right, this would then be a part of contingency and, and who knows if it would get spent or not in that way, but it allows for a broader, more comprehensive conversation, um, which may make sense. Well, we're, we're going to have that discussion before the end of the year. Um, as I've committed to bring before this board um, a revised set of proposals for department head benefits. So we will have that discussion okay. before the end of this year. Most of that won't necessarily have a major financial impact. Uh, not that this number is necessarily major, but right. um, if it's going to impact this year's budget, we need to decide now. That's all. I hear you. Okay. Further discussion? Yeah. Um, all right, then are we ready to vote? Mm -hmm. yeah. All in favor? Aye. All right, thank you. Now, any further discussion on the town budget? Are we ready to move on to WPCA? I'm ready. All right. WPCA, but before us, I think again, we already made a fairly significant modification mm -hmm. to this budget mm -hmm. uh, earlier as part of our package. Any further discussion, any further adjustments? Oh. No. All right, then we're done. Ms. Gardner, can you update us as to where we stand? million four hundred twenty three thousand six hundred and eighty three dollars for a three point three six percent increase in expenditures which equates to a mill rate increase of three point nine four percent and a mill rate of decimal zero two four two nine or twenty four point twenty nine approximately can you break down town and board of ed size, please, of the 281? Yeah. And before you do that, could you repeat the 281 number in its entirety, no, please? 281 Town is one two eight four eighty one nine three seven. That includes debt service, though, correct? Yes. And the Board of Ed is one five two nine four one seven four six. summarize we started this meeting with a expenditure budget of two hundred eighty seven million three hundred nine thousand six hundred and forty dollars we are now at two hundred and eighty one million four hundred and twenty three thousand dollars and six eighty three so that's a reduction of just under six million dollars today 
just under six million dollars. So it was what was the first one? Two eighty seven three oh nine six forty? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. request okay. before we go and I can see Mr. Kiley is still calculating over there um, just to clarify again the mm -hmm. breakdown the town is one two eight four eight one nine six seven do I have that correct nine three seven, nine, three, seven? Mm -hmm. okay and the board of ed five one five two nine four one seven four six okay. and okay. WPCA is Five million ninety one thousand six hundred and twenty six. All right, and then again, uh, that means an expenditure increase of three point three six percent because of the additional senior tax relief uh, that drives our mill rate up uh, because that reduces revenue uh, to three point nine four percent. Three three six and three nine four. And, and again, it. as you look at surrounding towns, you'll find um, I'm going to say very few. I haven't heard of any that uh, have gone out in this economy and tried to take care of that segment of our population that's most vulnerable uh, in terms of our seniors and our disabled. Another request. So, any final comments from my colleagues? Kristen? Um, well. First of all, I actually just want to thank both of you gentlemen for a very civil discussion and oh. a lot of cooperation and trying to compromise, and I appreciate that. I actually have a request. Before we vote on this budget, I'm wondering if the Finance Department would be willing to just quickly read through the numbers, aside from the adjustment that we voted on in the beginning, but the department numbers Excuse from me, the validation. Mayor, Ms. Gardner, if we could ask for your attention. My, my request was if you would be willing to just quickly read through the numbers from each department so that we can, I can be sure that I'm voting on what I think I should be voting on and confirm the numbers departmentally. Other than the adjustment that we voted on at the beginning, aside from that, the additional Thank you. The Selectman's Department um, reducing 0.35 secretary, a total of 31,699. The Selectman's Department part time, a total of 660, split between the two second Selectman salaries. Travel and meeting, a reduction of 600, split between the two Selectman travel allowances. Legal services, fees and professional services, a cut of $75,000. Finance department, a cut of 0.15 secretary for a total cut of 10086 Finance department, a cut from some, uh, surplus contribution of 250000 Fire department, a cut of two capital items. 36,000 for one staff car and 65,000 for the hydraulic lift for a total of 101,000. 
uh, move the new three police officers scheduled for the school program to overtime and cut the associated health care for three full-time officers. That cut would be 59,640. Public Works Operations, asphalt paving, a cut of 500,000. Capital in Public Works Operation, one of two brush bucket trucks for 18,250. Human and Social Services, fund the Senior Center Director for half a year. That would be a total cut from what was in the first Luckman's recommendation of 46,991 inclusive of salary and benefits. A overall reduction of health insurance due to an increased contribution by department heads, resulting in a cut to health care of 24,619. And that is it. The grand okay. total is 1,118,545, in addition to the first set of cuts you voted on on, on the potential sheet. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. All right. We, before we vote, any final comments? No. Okay. okay. The um, All right. Um, I do. I want to thank uh, my colleagues up here uh, for going through this. And, and um, again, in this day and age, I do want to be very complimentary in terms of the tone, tenor, and civility in the discussion, uh, the ability to look at, uh, if you will, different approaches, different perspectives, uh, and keep it on a very professional level. And I thank you both for not only doing that, but setting an example, uh, I hope, for other boards as we move through this process. I want to thank the Finance Department. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you and your team have done a great job in terms of getting us to this point. Certainly want to thank the Board of Ed uh, and Central Staff in terms of the work they've done to put this together and the work. Um, between Finance Department, uh, but especially Board of Ed, Dr. Title and his leadership uh, in getting through this uh, healthcare bid process uh, and helping move us forward on that so that we made major cost savings uh, throughout this. I think there are a number of good suggestions that came out of this discussion, uh, you know, certainly along the lines of the wellness program and some initiatives that we definitely have to address going forward. Uh, there are a number of action items from looking at how we combine services with the Board of Ed or cooperate more effectively to save costs. Certainly looking at the service and program evaluation committee uh, that we're, we're looking at setting up uh, so that we can do a better job of how we deliver services and, and learning from other towns as we go through that. Um, you know, we've, we've identified that we have a series of uh, key drivers that we have to address um, on an ongoing basis, salaries, pension, uh, health insurance, and health care. And, and I do want to compliment uh, and thank the unions and uh, uh, union leadership for working with recognizing the economy and, and working with the town to to help modify those agreements. I think if you've looked at the contracts we've uh, agreed to in the last 12 months, you've seen uh, the hard work and compromise that, that has come through with that. Uh, moving forward, I think that uh, debt service is another item that we have to uh, continue to focus on and there's no magic there. It's we have to either build less or build smaller uh, to keep that uh, under control. Uh, so in, in looking forward, uh, I think this budget uh, is one step, and the budget that the Board of Selectmen uh, is looking at now is less than the budget that we passed last year. So I think that that uh, starts to move us in the right direction. I think there are a number of adjustments in here that we're making uh, from increasing our paving uh, to increasing contributions to surplus that are addressing prior year problems. And I think the sooner we get through that, the better we are. Uh, and can start to worry about managing our current budget, our current operations, and keeping those under control. So with that, um, uh, is this board ready to vote on the approved budget at uh, $281,423,683? Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. <laughs> Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Actually, Thank you. Thank you.